Ladies and gentlemen, it's go time. Let's go. I'm going to kill all these other programs that I do not need right now. Don't need that. Don't need that. Don't need that. Hope I don't need that because I just closed it. Hello, everyone. What's up, Ellen? Good to see you. Good to see you here today. Pug Daddy's going to see you there as well. Uh, oh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Candy Thunder doing the uh, doing my intro, but for me. Now you have to do it vocally. Do it from there, though. Come on now. You make me sad. I'll do it for you. It's Dusty Thunder! hey -o. There we go. Good morning, Firestar. Sue Becker. Hot and humid today in Connecticut. What is your current show? What are you watching? The Boys, Paula. So I watched a little bit at the beginning. Haven't gotten back into it. Tori True Blood. That's a good one. There is a, uh, a guy I went to high school with who does a guest appearance in True Blood. Suki. Cat. Welcome to the Gosh Hackett fam. Glad to have your Rebel Wolf Marketing with Rose. Thank you so much for that. Greatly appreciate it. Steph, good to see you. Quacker. New girl for the first time? Yes. Yeah, yes. You're going to love it. Watching for season two of Natalia Grace. I have not heard of it. Sam, yeah, heck yeah. Chelsea, the boys. Uh, Kayla, hello. Steph, hello. Attack on Titan. I hear that's really good. Uh, Tori, Tori, yeah, new girl is amazeballs. Freaking love it. Steph, thanks so much for the share. I greatly appreciate it. Bill, the boys. Has been hotel again. Have not seen has been hotel either. Plot bug. Hello, Sarah and Cordova with the share there as well. Thanks so much. Gemma, hey, hey. Ruby, money heist. I haven't seen that either. Honeybee Clex Academy, haven't seen that either. So many shows I have not seen. Gemma with the share. Tad Lasso, Ted Lasso, heck yeah. Paula finally made a live. Heck yes, mama. Don't watch shows anymore. Always on TikTok Live. That's your show then. What show are you watching? The Dusty Thunder Show. Everybody who didn't answer that failed. I'm just kidding. It's a joke. It is a joke. We are going through, uh, is it Queen Charlotte or is it just Charlotte? Queen Charlotte. Yeah, we're, we're in Queen Charlotte right now. And I, I got to say, it's damn good. It's a very good show. Let's show you're not watching Anna Hartman. It's so, I mean, there's so much out there. Clotilda, the return home. Descendants of a slave ship return to Benin, Africa. Wow. Silver finishing Schitt's Creek for the first time. And you love it, right? Yeah. Dr. Sweets, your niece and you are watching Scrubs. It's such a good day. That's, that's a classic. They did how many seasons of Scrubs? It was like, the, doesn't it hold the record? The longest running show? I think it might. We'd have to look it up. Law and Order. Uh, sure, you listen to Dusty Thunder way more than you watch TV lately. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. Sergeant Mack, I saw you up there as well. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Grey's Anatomy. Something off Dragon and Bridgerton. Yeah, 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 yeah. We haven't started. Uh, we haven't started House of the Dragon yet. Have not started it yet. We're trying to finish off uh, Queen Charlotte before we do that. Nine seasons, Doctor Sweets. It's wild. It's wild. Honey Bear. Yeah, I hear Dusty Thunder is a pretty good show. I don't know. We haven't watched it yet. It's okay. It's fine, Tony says. It's fine. And evil on Paramount Plus. Hey, there you go. Criminal Minds for the upteenth time. We need to start watching that again. Doctor Who too. Yeah. It is. It is. Oh, it, it is. What ninety something here today? Ninety. And I worked outside like all weekend. Now, granted, Sunday was like Father's Day weekend, and we had a hell of a good time. Uh, day before was like manual labor all day, but still was like. Like two full days outside in the sun, and I felt like garbage on Monday. Garbage. Wendy Taylor, have you signed up for SMS notifications yet? We're still in the process of getting the new one set up, and and we are this close to getting an alphanumeric sender so it can actually show up like from Dusty Thunder to uh, both domestic and international peeps. So sign up at dusty-thunder.com if you have not already. Carol Jaworski, Mary, Gen X, Brat, and the Gosh Heckin' Fam. Heck yeah, Jill, Mama, Buffy, 
terabytes. Jerry Lee, go forth. We have a goal of lightning bolts, 4K of them to be exact, and we are only at 282 right now. Uh, okay. Uh, wait, which one? Both? Okay. Whoa. It's in your notes. Yeah, I know it's... <laughs> yeah. uh, quick announcement before we get into official notes. Today is a fundraising live. Today is a fundraising live. We are going to be... Uh, we're going to be doing another run at Mission Protect the Cake because we did something really cool today and delivered 50 cake kits to an area organization. So we're ready to do, to do more. We... Uh, I'm not recording. Thank you. I wasn't. Uh, now I am. Uh, okay. We we delivered 50 cake kits today to community support services uh, here in Southwest Missouri. It was amazing. An amazing experience. We filmed it. Caden is actually doing an edit on it right now. We're also fundraising today because our niece, Ava Lynn, has been invited or nominated and invited to attend the Missouri Ambassadors of Music. And they're traveling abroad to perform in London, Paris, Switzerland, Germany, and Austria. There are 221 high school students from across Missouri that were selected for this trip. Huge, huge deal for her. She's going to be stopping by in a little bit to fill us in a little bit more on it. But we are fundraising for both of that and Mission Protect the Cake today. All about the fundraisers today. She must go, Real Life Works says. I wish I would have done something like that. I had the, uh, I had the opportunity to join Bugle Corps and never did. Never did. What happened to the sign-on button? What sign on button? Cooper watching suits. Yeah. Is there a sign on button? I don't know. Rebel Wolf, Mark Zing, Melissa Munson, Anna Hartman, Jordan, Fantastic Pizza, Boo Boo, Jody Willis, Anna Hartman, Carol Jaworski, Jerry Lee Go Forth, Mary, Carol again there, Donna DJ, Jordan, Melissa Munson, Jody Willis. Jordan again there. Jordan, I messaged you, by the way. I haven't checked to see if you if you responded back yet, but I, I did shoot you a message earlier this morning, maybe. Carol Jaworski, Mary. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate it. Mommy Buff... Mommy? <laughs> Mama Buffy. Jody Willis, Rebel Wolf Marketing. See you there as well. Uh, Ellen, go watch the new podcast. Yes, if you don't have a show that you're watching right now, or if you're in between, or if you have time. You know what? Screw all that. Even if you do, this should take precedent. We do have the new podcast out with uh, with Ellen and Sergeant Mac. Came out this past Sunday, and you will laugh your ass off. You will laugh your ass right off. It'll just fall off your body, and then you'll have an ass like mine. I don't have an ass. I have leg tops. It's just like leg back. There's no no bump there. She's gonna love that trip. I I I hope she gets to go. I I really hope that uh, that, that we can help get her there. Cause man, what what an experience that would be for a young musician, right? Like, music is the language of the world, and uh, and I think being able to see it in the context of the world would be an amazing, amazing thing. Uh, for Rain Waldridge, we've got Opal, Cheryl Blystone, the boss bitch, Mongo. Thank you guys so much, Daniela, Becky, Hofton, Susan Orris, the Effulgent One, Mama Buffy, Jody Willis. You guys are awesome. Thanks so much. Greatly, greatly appreciate. Uh, we are, yeah, we're... We're fundraising today. All all gifts given during the live will be going to Mission Protect the Cake and to Ava Lynn's Music Trip Abroad. Music Trip Abroad. Drops of God. It's about wine. Well, that's interesting. It hurts to sit on your tailbone. Uh, yeah, you know what? Sometimes, sometimes it does. There's a thing called Jeep disease. Um, well, that's that's a different story, but yeah. Bridgerton, a lot of Bridgerton in there. Uh, I went through it. Yeah, went through it with Candy Thunder. It's pretty good. It's a pretty good show. Pretty good. The boss bitch. Welcome to the gosh heck it fam. Mungal, Catherine Slate, Amber L. Hickey, Santala, Susan R.S., Farin, Amber L. Hickey. You guys are awesome. Greatly appreciate it. Jeep disease. Jeep. It, it, I think it started because, uh, you know, because of the bumpy military jeeps and it would be like tailbone impact over and over again. And it can. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't know if there's a GoFundMe for the trip. We're using today's live as, as a fundraiser for it. But but Evelyn, whenever she shows up later, we'll be able to tell us a lot more about it here. 50 percent right? already on our bolt goal here to get Candy Thunder up here. 
Uh... Is it Evelyn? Just to sing? It's just choir. Yeah. It, I didn't know she played an... What instrument? <laughs> she does both. She does both choir and band. We can't remember what instrument she plays, but we're going to find out. Uh, yeah. Lola in St. Louis, hello there. Real life works, understood. We'll, 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 uh, we'll get a direct way figured out for you here. Welcome to today's show. It's, it's, it's been a bit of a cluster of a day. Of, of a week, really. You don't know what the instrument is. She plays the, the oboe. Uh, yeah, or it's, uh, <clears throat> yeah, she's, she's a sax player, but yeah, sax, oboe, clarinet, bass clarinet. This is a choir trip. Yes, okay, it is a choir trip, though. It is a choir trip. She'd be musically inclined on both sides for musically inclined, which is great. It doesn't, it doesn't happen to all the members of our family. It's weird how it like hops and skips around. Welcome to the stream. Glad to have you here on this Wednesday, June 19th, 2024. Of course, this is a fundraiser show. We're raising funds today for another round of Mission Protect the Cake after delivering 50 cake kits today. And we delivered more uh, before that to, uh, to a Head Start organization nearby here as well. Um, so fulfilling. I, I, We'll talk more about it, but wow. Uh, QOD, of course, today, while we're bouncing in between stories here, will be about what show you're watching right now. Coming up, we have stories about law school dilemmas, bachelor party drama, rude wedding guests, conflicting birthday parties, budgeting issues, overbearing mothers, and also cake, cookies, and a best of Redditor update story. Join me, will you? Join me, will you? Susan Horace, you have four, mem- four minutes to listen. Oh, wait, to listen to the podcast or today? What? Navy would enjoy the drums. I think Navy is going to be musically inclined. I really do. I really think she's going to be musically inclined. Hey, we hit that goal. Let's talk about this for a second, and then we'll get to the rest of the notes here. I'm going to go back into this real quick. Sergeant Mack leading the board today. Hell yes, brother. A.K. Mary in the number two spot, Dr. Sweets, TLS Journey, Wendy Taylor, Jody Willis, The Labyrinthian, Anna Hartman, Bay Fox, Tony Sparky with the save for numbers 12 and beyond, Talenskin, Jordan, and, 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 and Susan Osmart, we've got Mungau, Becky Murby, Fane, Catherine Slate, Mama Buffy, Opal, Lady of Poison, Tinker Truck, Rebel Wolf Marketing, The Boss Bitch, Amber L. Hickey, Lady Mags, Farin Waldridge, Donna, 12, 6, 6, 1, Jerry Lego, 4, Nat, 4, da, 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 Snowman Collector, NB the G, and a Folded One. Many thanks. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate the love. That unlocked the one and only Candy Thunder. The next one is going to unlock Caden Thunder and Confetti. Let me get that set up right quick here. I'm still doing the rock vibes here, by the way. Uh, we are going tiny dinies. Let me let me pin that real quick. Okay, hold up. Before I bring Candy Thunder up, just before I bring Candy Thunder up, I have to confess something real quick here. Um, I have to confess something real quick here. My phone is always volume all the way down. Always, right? Unless I'm specifically watching a video that I need to review and I need to hear the audio, then I'll turn it up. But otherwise, by default, it is always all the way down. Do what? I said I have to be a part of this. Story. You have to be a part. Okay. She, <laughs> come on up, Candy <laughs> Thunder. Okay. So my phone is always down all the way. That's the context that we need to know. Yes. Earlier today, I posted a picture as a story of all of the cake kits that we were getting ready to deliver in the back of my car. And I posted it with my volume all the way down, not realizing. Okay. So, <laughs> and then he posted another story while we were at um, community support services and we get back and I was watching the stories that he had posted and my volume was up because I had been listening to videos that we, that Caden had finished. And, um, I heard, <laughs> um, I'm a, I'm a nasty girl on the cake picture, like the cake kit picture. So you'll have to go and watch the dusty thunder story after the live. Um, 
and I didn't to the, know because <laughs> it will on a story it automatically adds like a popular song or something that's I trending on TikTok. <laughs> it, it added the it I'm added a, the I'm a nasty girl song <laughs> to my my mission protect the, the cake from it. picture <laughs> protect the cake indeed. So I had no this. idea. So I get back to the office from getting a haircut after <laughs> after we went and delivered them and like to talk to press and did did all the things. I go get a haircut and I come back and they're playing this and Tony's like, I had no idea you were so into this song. And I'm like, what in the hell are you talking about? And then he shows me and there's my post, my story, my photo with this song playing. And I'm like, you've got to be shitting me. I had no idea. I fell to the floor laughing because it's the funniest juxtaposition I've ever seen in my entire life. I had no idea. Um, I have not been a nasty girl, in fact. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Ah! Um, anyways, it was the funniest thing. The funniest thing ever. Also, the song is... Um, it's dirty. It's very dirty. It's a dirty song. It's also like very... um. It's like a catchy tune. I know so it's stuck it's in like, my head now. It's stuck too. in my oh, head because no. we kept listening to it. And this guy laughed so hard. He couldn't even stand up. Like he kneeled next to the table and had to hold himself up because he was laughing so hard. He's like, what, what am I going to do now? Oh, yeah. What am I going to do? I, mean, it's just, I, don't, I don't know. Um. So we shopped this week for more, more cakes and like getting everything for the cake kits. And Navy Thunder helped me um, shop. And she... Was so excited to be to help and to get to be a part of it, and she thought that we were shopping for her birthday cake. Um, it's like either one really big ass cake yeah. or a lot of normal sized ones. So we get to the office and um, and we're gonna put the kits together. And she tells Tony that this is she has a strawberry cake mix, so she did get one. But it's my birthday. yeah, it's my birthday. This is for my birthday. We're gonna make this for my birthday. It's my birthday cake. And I'm like, you just had a birthday. But we let her think that it was still still her birthday. She did help. She's a great help. She like, really is. When you she's, give that kid a mission, she is she's a huge help. Yeah, we uh, we learned that yesterday, and it was it's very stressful to go to like Walmart and Sam's, especially because the cart was so full that I couldn't um, put her in the cart, so she was walking next to me, and it just like I feel like when you have a toddler, things take double the amount of time that it would normally take, and yes. so I was just trying to like move and do it and you know navy was so like epically perfect yesterday like i couldn't change a thing about it but i still complained to my mom that i was like just like stressed out from being at walmart and sam's and um and on the way home i was like you know what navy was and it may have taken me four hours instead of an hour and a half but i'm like she was perfect and i think that sometimes like when you're in it as a parent you take it for a little bit for granted mm. because it and you don't realize how fast it actually goes and, and all that stuff. So here's your reminder to slow down and enjoy the four-hour shopping trip that it may take to buy groceries instead of... But some days you're just like, no, no, no. And, it's uh, tough. But, um, but yesterday was I was driving home and she... I mean, she was just a rock star. And this was one of the first things where it was like she was truly a part of like walking next to the car, holding my hand, you know, walking in the parking lots. Not that she doesn't do that, but this was, this was a big deal. And she was, she was perfect. And she was a big girl yeah. yesterday. So I, I did call my mom back and I was like, you know what? I should not have said any of that because I wasn't stressed out. I was like, it was just, it just took longer. And really she was, she was the, the best job. Like she did the best job and our teens are, are all over the place right now. Like mm -hmm. weights, cheer practice. So I know that you guys hear a lot about Navy, but they are, we are their taxi service right now. Yep. It's drop them off and then run and do something and then go pick them up and then drop them at the next thing. Yep. So. And they all, it's not, it's not like any of them are in the same place. No, None of them. No. They're all in different places. What is going on? Yep. What is going on? All right. First story time, guys. Take Bye. Love, love. Mwah. The incomparable Candy Thunder, ladies and gentlemen. We are at 391 of 3K right now on the tiny, 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 tiny goal to get Candy Thunder. I'm sorry, to get Caden Thunder up here. Words are already hard. Already hard. And a reminder, if, you, uh, if you're just now jumping in, today is a fundraising live. We are raising funds for more Mission Protect the Cake kits after delivering 50 today. And for my niece Ava Lynn's trip abroad. To see the world through music. 
I'm not jelly. I am jelly. Uh, make sure you subscribe on YouTube to stay up to date on all the latest content, including our latest podcast with Ellen and Sergeant Mac, which is Amaze Balls. If you haven't seen it now, ding ding shame. Uh, remember, it is free to subscribe on YouTube. So if you haven't already, we'd appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. At least two posts per day there, sometimes three weekly compilations, the podcast, and more. Go check it out. Piano Man Audiobook is available on Audible. Check the link tree link in bio for convenient links to pretty much everything, including swag, SMS, sign up, links, all that kind of stuff. Uh, today's live is a special fundraising live. All the funds from today's gifts will be donated to fund Mission Protect the Cake and to help fundraise our niece Ava Lynn's trip. She was invited slash nominated to attend Missouri Ambassadors of Music. And they're traveling abroad to perform in London, Paris, Switzerland, Germany, and Austria. There, She is one of 221 high school students in Missouri that were selected for this trip. Con- Frick, congratulations, by the way, Ava Lynn. That's awesome. A reminder to keep chat positive and respectful today. Everyone is, of course, allowed to have their own opinion. And we don't all have to agree. We're not all going to agree. But it costs absolutely nothing to be respectful and to DFHB. Uh, but do not mute, do not mute or you will be spoiled. Something about that doesn't feel right. Don't spoil or you will be muted. If you know the story we're talking about, uh, or if you've heard it, you've read it already, and you know how it ends, please don't spoil. You will be muted without warning. So just don't do it. Uh, We're going to be playing the story game again today where we're casting our votes based on a poll just by the title of the story. We'll do a one-minute poll after reading each title where you can cast your vote for the OP's Ask on Scale rating at the end of the story. We'll see if we get it right. Let's rock and freaking roll. Shall we? 540 a 3K on the Tiny Dinies right now. You all unlocked a cake story at the end of last week's live. Uh, I think it was it was hit in the public live or in VIP. Was it hit in VIP? Uh, yes. yes. Okay. We're going to go ahead and read the cake story that you all unlocked last week. Heck yes. This one, I guess I better do an intro here. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you. This one's about cake. <laughs> practical sound effects going on here. This one is titled, Am I the Askonaut for yelling at my wife in front of my family for putting salt in my mom's birthday cake? Oh, my. Okay, uh, let me get a poll going here. Poll is up. Title again, Am I the Askonaut for yelling at my wife in front of my family for putting salt in my mom's birthday cake? So it's not the putting the salt in the cake that is the question here. It is yelling at the wife in front of the family for doing that. Uh, oh, so while we're doing this, if you have not been exposed to Mission Protect the Cake yet, uh, first of all, I highly encourage you to visit Linktree and check out our page dedicated to explaining more of it. But I'll give you a... I will give you a uh, a quick rundown here. 20 seconds left on the poll, by the way. It looks like Ascon 2 is pulling ahead here. Um, and you know what? Mm. I'm going to go NTA. Let's see what happens. I'm going to go NTA. Mission Protect the Cake is a, an initiative that we started where we're actually creating cake kits um, that, that have a longer shelf life because we're using um, like... Um, soda in it we're using applesauce instead of butter eggs and milk so there are there are ingredients that we swapped swapped out to have a longer shelf life and the whole goal is we've read too many stories where people who have a birthday do not have a birthday cake we want to prevent that even if it's just for one person we feel like we've made a difference we've delivered um close to 80 at this point we delivered 50 of those today to community support services here in southwest missouri who deals with people with developmental disabilities their day program alone has uh, close to 60 people in it. So people who go there every day for to have some kind of sense of community. Um, and and we almost have, have every single one of those folks a birthday cake kit for this year. So it, it is amazing. Um, that is one of the things we're fundraising for today to create more of those cake kits. Uh, and what a crazy, crazy fulfilling thing. It has been just wild. And you guys made all that happen. So thank you so much. Um, and like we got applause. I got a hug today. We'll we'll show you the video. But it's, I hope you guys feel as rewarded as we do being able to do that for people. Uh, those of you who have participated so far. Thank you so much. Okay, we have Ascon 2 pulling away with 67 of the 166 votes here. We'll see what happens. Bye, golly. Bye, golly. Okay, here we go. 
<clears throat> Again, the title of this one was, Am I the Askinaut for yelling at my wife in front of my family for putting salt in my mom's birthday cake? So, my wife, 24, is the main cook in the apartment. She cooks whenever we have guests over, and for ages, mom has been complaining about my wife not adding enough salt in her meals. My wife would take it personally and start a fight over this small comment my mom makes. Anyways, my wife and I hosted dinner weeks ago and mom made the same comment about my wife not using enough salt, though my wife swore she did and said she was careful with salt, but mom still insisted food was tasteless. Hey, time out. Mom, add your own fucking salt. That's why there's a salt and pepper shaker on the fucking table. Game on. Now the family were divided on this, so we couldn't really decide if my wife really used enough salt. My wife started crying after they left, saying mom was being deliberate with this salt remark to make her look like a bad cook. But I told her that's not true, and she needed to let it go, and she did. Hours later, she forgot about it completely. For my mom's birthday, my wife offered to make the birthday cake, saying she found a really great recipe on a cooking blog. Mom wasn't excited for the idea, but I told my wife to do it, thinking it'd be a nice gesture to help mom get past, to help them get past their conflict. We went to my mom's house and brought the cake. During the party, my wife insisted my mom be the first to taste the cake. Mom grabbed a piece, and once she put it once she put it in her mouth, she immediately got it out while spitting in the plate. We freaked out and got her some water while she was yelling that there was salt in the cake. I looked at my wife, and she said she had no idea what my mom was talking about. I immediately went to get a piece and taste some and found out that it was full of salt. It tasted horrible, absolutely horrible. Still, my wife acted confused, but I told her how fucked up it was for her to put salt in a cake. She said that since mom was obsessed with salt, then she figured she'd prefer it over sugar in her birthday cake. I was flabbergasted. I blew up and berated her in front of my family till she took her bag and went home. My sister said it was all right and that my wife was probably feeling frustrated and wanted to make a point with my mom. I went home and she refused to speak except to say that I hurt her by yelling at her and that I should have told mom off when she kept making remarks about her cooking, but I told her she acted childishly and ruined the birthday party and made an unnecessary scene for no reason at all. Now she's acting like the wronged party, but... I let her know she has to apologize to mom. Huh. Huh. Yeah, you know what? We'll we'll whip this out right away. We get some petty confetti, some choppy petty confetti. I really need to rebuild this animation. It just struggle buses every second of the way, doesn't it? It's like, I just can't do it. It's some, some petty confetti for sure. Now, here, here's where the real kicker comes in. Like, obviously, obviously mom or mother-in-law in this case, I guess it's OP's mom, for her for her remarks. Like, you salt to taste, right? If you like things saltier, legitimately, you use the frickin' salt shaker. That's what it's there for. Making remarks over and over again just to take jabs at someone, obviously not cool. Um, is this a two wrongs make a right kind of situation there? Not saying it wasn't warranted, but is it a two wrongs make a right situation here? Need a petty confetti sticker? Yeah. He didn't have to take mother's mother-in-law's side though. Agreed. Agreed. So, so I think that this is another one of those occasions where the 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 title, the title question isn't the real question. The question should not be, Am I the astronaut for yelling at my wife in front of my family for putting salt in my mom's birthday cake? The real question should be here, Am I the astronaut for siding with my mother every single time and not my wife? And for that, yeah. Yes, you are. OP, you are an asshole for that. That is not cool. Your wife is feeling completely alone, which is why she took the drastic action that she took. She knows she shouldn't have done this, but what choice did she feel like she had except to retaliate? She was backed into a corner. Was she not? All cakes have at least a pinch of salt. She did try to talk to him. Sometimes petty is the only way to drive a point. Tell hubby he could start cooking. Side for siding with mom. Uh, yeah, and even here at the very end, it's not, there's no, there's no question of mom apologizing to her. The only question is she has to apologize to mom. That's what, that's what OP ends this with. So, um, I'll answer the actual question. Am I the astronaut for yelling at my wife in front of my family for putting salt in my mom's birthday cake in the context of knowing that you have sided with your mother every single time leading up to this point and have had not been on your wife's team at all coming into this? Yeah, I think you are. Where though? Where? I think it's at least a two. He definitely shouldn't have done it. 
Is it one? I don't know that I can call it a one because if he is, well, you know, he's likely been manipulated to side with his mom, which which mommy's boys do often. Does it make him evil or does it make him manipulated? A hard to? Like, a, like in need of some fiber, Sergeant Mac? I'm going to stick with two here and give him a little bit of grace because I want him to get his head out of his ass. It might be hard. It might be difficult with all of his hard number twos up in there, but hopefully he can turn this thing around, realize that he's been siding with his mom at every single turn and be like, you know what, honey, you're right. Uh, she needs to apologize to you as well. I'm not saying that, that what, what OP's wife did was, was right. It was petty. Uh, she felt like she was backed into a corner, though, and she felt like that's the only action she could take. It's either that or just submit and and be this woman's punching bag for the rest of her life. And she wasn't about to do that, so she took a stand. Took a stand in a petty, uh, very salty way. Yes, it was salty. Um, however, she knows it wasn't, right? She knows. But that's not the thing in question here, right? It's not the thing in question. So, yeah. She did act stupid. She, yeah, she played it off. She's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. No idea. What, what kind of animals crave salt? Because reading this, I was like, oh, mother-in-law might be a slug, but they reject salt. Like, they hate salt. So, I don't know. She would have, like, shriveled up and foamed. <laughs> Brother, that maybe she was feeling frustrated. What salt? Horses like salt licks? Caden Thunder, I crave salt. Horses, deer, goats. Okay, well, maybe she's got a little bit of that in her. You never know. Yeah, get her a salt lick. There you go. Next time, next time they come over for uh, for dinner, Op, not 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 Op, Op's wife, Op, sit down, Op's wife, get a salt lick out, and just set it on the table next time. Next time you have her over for dinner, that would be good. All right, I landed at two, and so the the vast majority of people voted at two. So congratulations, you all did well. I voted NTA in the very beginning, so I was way off, way off. Hey, Sergeant Mac, King of the Tiny Diny, Bridget McCarty Waldrup, Carla eighty two Louise, Poetica Rose. We've got thirteen eighty out of three K on Tiny Dinies. We're going for Tiny Dinies right now, and as a reminder, it is a fundraiser day for Mission Protect the Cake and for my niece Ava Lynn who has an opportunity to go abroad for choir with 220 other students from Missouri. The highest honor. Lala Luru, Poetica Rose, Carla 82, Louise, Denise Burkhardt, TLS, Patricia, Mrs. Toad, the boss bitch, Candy Thunder, Patricia, again there, Carla 82, Louise, again there, Patricia, dropping a hundo, eight, tiny diny, heck yeah. Miriam Najee with the let him cook, thanks so much, Kellyanne, Candy Thunder, Beth Bars, Tony Spark, Melissa Tacal, Wolf, Frankie J's mama. Hey, yo, party's here. Nick, Boss, Laid, Lala, Laru, Lala, Luru, Suzanne, Diana. Thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate it. Mama Joe, Shannon, Aaron, Melissa, Tickle, Wolf, Diana. You guys are great. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, thank. 1501 out of 3K on the tiny diny right now. What is it that, uh, that, that Queen Charlotte says whenever someone passes? She's like, sorrows, prayers. So, yes, yeah, sorrows, prayers, sorrows, prayers. Sorry, I don't know why that popped into my head, but it did. All right, we're going to dive into the first official story for today. The uh, first story we read was a cake reward story that you all unlocked at the end of last week's stream. Oh, we're halfway on the goal already? Heck yeah. And that is to get Caden Thunder and Confetti up here. Let's go. Here's the first official story. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder again with another Reddit story for you. This one from the AITA subreddit is titled, Am I the Asconaut if I don't want to pay for my husband's law school? Oh, dear. Let's do a poll for this one. Am I the astronaut if I don't want to pay for my husband's law school? Poll has started. Hmm. If I don't want to pay for my husband's law school. There's, I mean, it's tough with titles because we don't have the context. I'm going to go NTA again. I've got a gut feeling. What a feeling. Going NTA, we'll see. Oh, it seems like the vast majority of other people are there as well. Watch us all be wrong together. B 
Being wrong is fun. I do it a lot. First Wives Club again. Oh. Perhaps. Title again was, Am I the Astronaut if I don't want to pay for my husband's law school? Five seconds left. If I don't want to pay for husband's law school. And 75% of voters chose N-T-A. Let's see what actually happens here. Okay. Okay, to start off, I am a 28 female and my husband is 38 male. He's been jobless for a few months, but just landed a six-figure job in Missouri. Our plan has been for me to finish school, two more years of my engineering degree currently doing, work in the field for a couple of years, then try for a baby. Well, I ended up getting pregnant a few months ago, and in the end, we decided to keep the baby. Our decision was that I would stay home with the baby during the day, not work, and take a couple night classes a week to finish my degree. My husband has always been encouraging me about finishing, sorry, words are hard. My husband has always been encouraging about my finishing school, but now wants to go to law school out of nowhere. Mind you, he already has 40K in student loans, a home foreclosure, a recent eviction, and bad credit. We are living with my parents right now until the move because of the eviction. He moved into, blah, 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 blah. Words are really freaking hard today. I'm sorry. Here's the animation to make this official. My face doesn't want to cooperate today. What's new? There we are. Okay. He moved into a very expensive apartment and spent every dollar he earned. I had to cover everything when he lost his job, and it is way out of my budget. I didn't pay rent when I first moved in. I always offered, but he always insisted I focus on school. Our new apartment will have to be in my name. On top of that, now he wants to randomly go to law school in the middle of all of this? I still have my FAFSA to pay for school and currently work as a server. He will be paying the rent while I'm pregnant and can't work. Well, some of my fan... Well, some of my financial aid will go to expensive expenses. What's happening with my face, Candy Thunder? Why doesn't it work? Make my face work. Well, some of my financial aid will go to expenses. Maybe I'm being selfish, but it seems unfair of him to spring his lawyer dream on me out of nowhere, especially while newly pregnant. He wants to do it soon because he feels old, 38, but our next couple of years are going to be financially stressful enough. We have been through a lot financially, and all of it due to his irresponsible spending. He is filing for bankruptcy soon, but still hasn't yet due to money issues. I also don't see how he is going to have time for a newborn, law school, and his new job. I don't want to be a stay-at-home mom forever. Nothing wrong with it, just excited to use my degree, get out of serving, and also chip away at his debt. It feels unfair for him to add more financial stress when he caused the issue we are currently in. Our kid will be around three when I plan to rejoin the workforce, so I also feel like I'm making career sacrifices by taking less classes per semester and postponing internships to stay home with the baby. I just feel like an asshole for dissuading him from becoming a lawyer because he has always been supportive of my schooling and swear this is what he wants to do with his life. He thinks it's unfair for him to support me through school and for me to not do the same for him. FAFSA is paying for my school. We would be paying for his. It's just so annoying because we randomly get hit with a baby while I'm the only one working. He finally gets a good paying job after us struggling for months. So I thought we'd be able to catch up and breathe. But then he pulls this out of nowhere. My question is, am I the astronaut for not wanting him to go to law school? Uh, no, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. Uh, first of all, yeah, her, her FAFSA, FAFSA, uh, isn't necessarily a grant. I mean, it, it can be student loans. It can be Pell Grants. It can be lots of things. FAFSA is just the form you fill out that determines your financial eligibility, right? It's been a while since I've been there. It's been a while since I've been in college. You don't get this gray beard for nothing. Um, 13 hundo to go for the goal. Yep, tiny dinies. Heck yeah, we're still going for tiny dinies here. Uh, no, the, the issue is not, not supporting him during school when he supported you. First of all, he hasn't finished that. You're still doing school. If you're going to do the whole I supported you so you can support me thing, first of all, he's got to start supporting you. Letting you live at his place without paying rent at the beginning. <laughs> when he ends up getting evicted from the place. And now, like, you, you guys are both saddled with all of his debt and his bad decisions. And he wants to go make another one. Be like, excuse me, sir. 
you aren't allowed to make decisions for a while because every time you've made a choice, you have put us in a worse and worse and worse position. Every single one of these decisions from now on needs to be a needs to be a discussion. And this is not something where you just be like, hey, you know what? I, I think I know what I want to do. I know I just landed a six figure job, but I really want to go to law school. Cool. You know what? It's it's good to have dreams. It's good to have things that you think you want to do. However, sir, you have a responsibility to your family first. And if you've already agreed to support your wife while she goes to school, you have to see that through first. Once that's done and she's able to support to start supporting the family, then bring it up again. And maybe the time will be right. The time is not right right now. If you were financially ahead and had a nest egg and were in a position where you could do this without causing your family harm, that's a different conversation. That's not the case at all. You've already done so much harm to your family and put them in the position that they're in right now. Now you want to do more. It's... (sighs) It feels like a freak out. And this this might be a first time father freak out. We read a a lot of stories that I I get the first time father freak out vibe from. It could very well be part of that. It doesn't explain all of it. It doesn't explain everything leading up to this moment, but it could explain this thing right here. Maybe he's looking ahead and he's like, I want to, I want to have a stable future to be able to support my family. Okay. I understand that. Dude, you just landed a six figure job and those aren't exactly common in Missouri. So why don't you start there and and start there instead of venturing on a new journey that that doesn't give you the ability to earn any income until several years down the road. And then you're going to be paying back a huge amount of money. Take care of your family first. OP, you are not the asshole for, for wanting, for not wanting to support him going to school. No, because it's not the right decision. It's not the right play. It's not the smart play. Just no, no. I don't know how you communicate that to him. How 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 do you communicate this to him without it just sounding like you're just saying no and shitting on his dream? I think the whole, I think the father angle here is at least the thing that would create the most amount of internal pain and hopefully create some change in the way that he's thinking. The you have a responsibility to your child. That's in here. Start there. You've already made progress by securing this job. He hasn't even gone there yet. They're moving to Missouri soon because he just landed this job. Why would you just having achieved something great want to be like, you know what? I want to, I want to undo that. And I want to take three more steps backward. That's what I want to do. What kind of, what could be causing this this desire. He's afraid to fail again. He's not being responsible. There's a time and place to try something new. Right now is not the time. I, I agree with that, Stacy. Definitely agree with that. Self-sabotage, Rebel Wolf. That is definitely some self-sabotage. Like he achieves one good thing and then immediately decides to implode it. Unless he's already done something to screw up that opportunity and he's already lost it. That's entirely possible too. Self-sabotage. It, okay, so here's the next question. What, what drives self-sabotage? Fear of failure? And at that point, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, is it not? There's no way he'd be accepted to law school. Joyful stranger. Yeah. That is another challenge. It's not something you can just decide you want to do. He could go to college online after work. Yeah, that's true. I mean, if he wanted to work that direction, yeah, he's got to get accepted first, but, but he could chip away that direction. We don't even know that he has the prerequisites completed in order to apply to law school. There are prerequisites, right? He could chip away at those at night. But again, he's going to have a new babe to take care of as well. Like the amount of time you're going to have after hours to take classes and stuff is not going to exist. And OP understands this because she's already trying to spin several plates at once. Fear of success. He doesn't want the responsibility of carrying the, fi- the family financially. I understand, uh, but he's already accepted that. 
because he already, his wife's already in school and is going to be at least partially a stay-at-home mom. Did he take the LSAT? I, uh, Turner AC, my imposter syndrome, helps my inner saboteur. Yeah, he... Let's, let's assume for argument's sake that he has done nothing that is a prerequisite, including taking the LSAT, including taking any kind of prereq courses at, uh, at a standard four-year university degree. Four-year degree university. That's what I meant to say. Christine, full-time student, law students aren't allowed to work. There's all kinds of evidence stacked up against him doing this, and, and for it just being a whim... For it just being a dream, it's it's the general erratic behavior that has me most concerned, right? It is his his behavior leading up to this point, and this is just the newest uh, in in the latest series of what's the word I'm looking looking for eccentricities. It is the latest eccentricity for him, which gives me a lot more discomfort about his ability to be a stable father. Like, there are bigger issues here. So, OP, you are not the asshole for not wanting to pay for your husband's law school. That's not the real issue. There, there are much bigger issues here. And I feel like you're going to have to become, you're going to have to, you're going to have to pull out some tough love. This is going to take some tough love to communicate with him. Um, and and if he tries to guilt you by saying that he, he supported you, that's a commitment he's not yet through through with. Cause you're still in school and kind of seems like he has a trouble. He has trouble following through with his commitments. Bring that up. See this through. You agreed to take this job for six figures in Missouri. See that through finish something before you start trying to take on new things. Let's just focus on finishing things first. Let's focus on cleaning up the mess that you've made. And then we're in a place that's more comfortable. Then we can address the next steps in the future and the things that you want to do. We are not yet to the position where we can decide to pursue wants. We are in a position where we have to address needs you may have to slap him around a little bit he's 38 she's 28 plug bug you just got your text hey get out your brooms maybe he sees her getting breaks from kid because of homework uh no the kid's not here yet she's pregnant priorities change when you have kids they come first they're supposed to uh christine therapy agreed Therapy would be a damn good idea for everybody here. Um, and by everybody, I mean OP and her husband. They're staying with her folks or his folks right now. If you're having trouble communicating these, thing, these things to him, highly recommend couples counseling. Um, and that will help walk through being able to communicate these things and maybe get some things through to him and maybe help you understand what's going on in his mind better because it seems like it's a bit messy. She's about to have two kids, cut and run. No, he, oh. Texts are still an hour late, Juliet. How? We're getting ours on time. I don't know. I don't, we're getting ready to switch providers, so we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. She needs to run before her entire financial situation crumbles. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great Dragon Fox Gaming with the Galaxy. Heck yeah. Catherine Slate with the Tiny Dinies. 37 of them. Wayward Christian Museum Girl. We are at 1950 a 3K. And as a reminder, today is a fundraiser. Uh, fundraiser Live. All of the gifts we receive during the live will go toward Mission Protect the Cake and to my niece Ava Lynn, who is going, uh, who's hopefully going abroad for, for choir. JC King all day with a galaxy as well. Heck yeah. Pops, welcome to the Gosh Second Fam. June, Grey Dragon, Fox Gaming, Fane, Karen Jordan, June. We've got Christian Museum Girl, C Sizzle, Candy Thunder, Janine Benham, Christian Museum Girl again, Shannon Aaron. Shannon Aaron, um, there was a character in Game of Thrones. What was what was the young guy, the young kid's name? John Aaron? Shannon, every time I see Shannon Aaron, it makes me it makes me think of of that family. 
Christine for JP. Welcome to the Gosh I Could Fam. JTK all day. I was sending all kinds of stuff over here. Also, Google Queen, Google Queen Cat. Shan loves to read. Lacey, Mercy, uh, Sherry Berry. Shan loves to read again there. Anise Moon, you guys are awesome. Mary Bell, Christian Museum Girl, Flame McLeod, Robin Tracy Aaron. Cunningham, Norton. What was it? Robin Aaron. Robin Aaron. That's what it was. Yeah. I don't know why Shannon Aaron makes me think of that, but every time. Pink, uh, you're, there is a way to submit them directly to us. If you go to dusty-thunder.com, there's a form where you can submit a story directly. However, there's a small chance that it's going to get plucked to be used here. So the best route, the recommended route is to post it on the Dusty Thunder subreddit. Uh, Opal with the superpower, June and Firestar, Julia, Great Dragon Fox. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, we've got uh, Roys and Quinn from Ireland. Hello there. Thanks for being here today. Robin Aaron. Yeah, 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 yeah. Also, there's a guy running for sheriff in our area whose last name is Snow. And I'm like, how, as a campaign manager, would you not be like, the slogan has to be, and now my watch begins. Come on now. Come on now. Ellen, thanks so much. Yeah, tap the screen and help hit the likes goal today. We are at 32%, 160.6K of 500K. Also, we surpassed 2K on the Tiny Dinies goal. We've got, what, 870 to go? Heck yeah, we're going to get there. Come on now. Remember, we're fundraising today. Calamity Kane and Queenie with the lightning bolt. Heck yeah, thanks so much. Firestar, June, Opal. Thank you guys so much. Second story, here we go. Second and first. Sam is the first. I'm Henry Eighth. I am. No, okay. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you from AITA again. This one is titled, Am I the Askonaut for Fighting with My Husband While He's Away for a Bachelor Party? Oh, this doesn't seem right. That seems like a party foul to me. Poll is starting now. Am I the Askonaut for Fighting with My Husband While He's Away for a Bachelor Party? I, context would be helpful here, but generally... I think it's probably not not the best not the best play. Some things can wait till they return home. Uh, so I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go three. I'm gonna play it kind of conservatively here. Three shouldn't have done should have done it differently. Now, if he was like sending you pictures and stuff of what was happening during the bachelor party, and it was. Getting a little risque, that would probably prompt some at-present fighting. But we shall see. We shall see. Tren, I hate having fun and having a significant other mad while you're away, while you're trying to relax. Ask on one, huh? Yeah. One second left, and we ended with 36% going ask on three. Playing it kind of safe in the middle of the road here, too. Let's see what happens. Again, the title was, Am I the Askonaut for Fighting with My Husband While He's Away for a Bachelor Party? My husband, male 40, and I, female 34, are currently in a fight over his behavior at a bachelor party. I'm pregnant and possibly more emotional than usual. We usually text throughout the day, replying within minutes. He flew 2,000 miles for the party, and on one day, he was slow to reply 40 minutes to one and a half hours with short answers. I wasn't bothered initially, knowing they might be busy. However, after texting him asking their plans and being left on red for over an hour, I checked his location on Find My Friends and saw that he was at a day club pool bar. He finally texted saying that they had just arrived downtown for dinner, which was clearly untrue. When I called out the lie, he admitted that they were at the day club but were heading to dinner. The short text continued. The next morning, they were golfing, so I didn't expect much communication. I spent the afternoon with friends and learned that two weeks prior, he attended a strip club with the same friends during an overnight trip I wasn't on. He had told me that they were at a bar that evening, but did not mention going to a strip club. I don't care that he went to a strip club. It's the lack of transparency that bothers me. This news, along with the short text and the earlier lie about their whereabouts, set me off. I texted him about the strip club, and he FaceTimed me with his friends vouching that nothing inappropriate happened, making me look like an overreacting wife. He claimed the omission was at the groom's request to avoid pre-wedding issues, yet all the other wives knew. I ended the call more upset due to the lack of apology and failing gaslit. He texted saying he doesn't keep secrets from me, and then stopped texting entirely. After two hours, I sent a passive-aggressive, well, good night, I guess, text. He replied that he thought the issue was resolved, then did not contact me for the rest of the evening. 
The next morning, I texted saying I felt like he'd been distant and ignoring me all weekend, asking why he didn't message me when they were out or returned to the hotel. He replied that I had killed the mood and made him miserable, accusing me of being unreasonable and embarrassing him by checking his location. He also said he couldn't wait until my girl's trip in two weeks to apply the same pressure, implying it's a competition. My trip, being 20 weeks pregnant and sober, will look very different than his, but maybe that's irrelevant here. He dramatically claims he rarely goes out with friends and will just stay home if we're gonna if we're going back to not trusting each other. Well, going back to not trusting each other, there's an interesting slip. Am I overreacting and being unreasonable? Am I wrong for wanting transparency? Am I the ass cannot for picking a fight while he's away on a bachelor party trip? You know what? Damn. I was wrong again. Let me reset this. Hey, we're almost to 25 hundo on tiny dinies. We need 508 tiny dinies to get there. We can do it. We can do it. I'm going NTA. I'm going NTA here, and this is the biggest reason why. She's pregnant, you dumb fuck. If your wife is pregnant, you need to have your eyeballs glued to that damn phone. First of all, I wouldn't have gone. I mean, 20 weeks, maybe that's safe. That's safe. Or I, I would feel nervous about going, but I'd go. But if your wife is pregnant, dude, you better be responding like pretty damn quickly because you never know what kind of communication is going to be needed there. I would want to know that. But also, um, there, there's a slip here at the end going back to being untrusting. That's a hint at something that we don't know about. But there's clearly some kind of issue seated there already. Uh, and he clearly wasn't being 100% transparent. Now, in general, I would say, look, if you're out with your friends, like leave that person alone and let them truly enjoy the time. That's the general approach here. This is different because she's pregnant, number one. But number two, he either tried hiding something or or was was pre-notifying about where they were going. I don't know. It, it, it was shady. Um and him trying to turn it back around on her to say that she killed the she killed the vibe. She killed the vibe. So him turning it back around to her direction is just a classic deflection, right? Like there are a few things that he has done and said here that that give that give the red flag vibe to me. But overall, I don't give a shit about any of it because if she is pregnant, respond in a timely manner and don't be a dick about it. Why would you cause more drama here instead of just being like, I'm sorry, I, I'm i sorry. Like, uh, I was telling you where we were heading, not where we are now. And yeah, there's just fucking communicate in the first place. It's not that hard to do. I enjoy communicating with Candy Thunder. We wouldn't have this problem. That's true. We wouldn't have this problem. You know, oh, hold up. Either Mike in or come up here because I want to hear your thoughts. Hey. <laughs> An unprompted appearance by Candy Thunder, ladies and gentlemen. I'm curious. I'm curious because when I said NTA, she looked surprised. And I want to know why. Ladies and gentlemen, Candy Thunder. <clears throat> I, uh, I so why, I, why were you surprised? Um, I, I just felt it was like it was an ESH. I think, mm. that, I think that she is being... A little bit over the top, which can make him feel the need to hide something, maybe. But I, I do feel like like she's being a little bit over the top in her reaction. But he's also doing something that is making her feel like she has to be over the top. So it's like a vicious circle between the two of them. Instead of just clear communication, hey, I'm I'm pregnant. You're going on this weekend, which is two thousand miles away. Like for my own sanity, can you please let me know what your plans are? Like, what are you doing? Can you give me a rundown of the day? Like, just so I know what's going on. Something like that. If that's what makes her feel comfortable. But he's not doing anything to make her feel more comfortable. Um, so in turn, it makes her seem overbearing. Which I, I think she sucks way less than him. But I think at the same time, like, they have to learn how to communicate. Because right now, they're, mm. they're not effectively communicating. Where both of them feel like they can get what they need out of the relationship because she's pissed and he's pissed, but he doesn't realize that what he's doing is leading to her being pissed. He just thinks that she's being overbearing 
And instead of just saying, hey, I feel like this is what you might need to be comfortable in this relationship, he's like doing the exact opposite and hiding stuff, which in turn makes her escalate. So to and me, it's like they, they, they're just not, they're just not communicating. And as we've talked about several times, year one communication is super fucking hard. However, no. I feel like, I feel like pregnancy communication is, is not difficult. Like I, I tried to over communicate during pregnancy because, because every bit of it scared the shit out of me. But, but if you're having trouble now, Oh yeah. boy, just wait, because it's about to get a whole lot harder and you're going to have no filter and you're going to have a lot harder time communicating once that babe is here. And I, and I agree. And, and, and I think people have different, every pregnancy is different. And I think as, as, as women or anyone should, re, should respect that every pregnancy is different. What, while one may have been easy for you, maybe it's, maybe it leads to a plethora of intrusive thoughts for another person. For me, I had a lot of like intrusive thoughts and like thinking things that I would never normally think, not like bad stuff, but just getting pissed off for no reason. And I, I could sense what was happening. I could understand it. But I think I don't I don't want to be so quick to blame pregnancy, but also you can. Blame it's got to be a contributing just factor. A, it's a fine line. So I think but I think being respectful in general, of the fact that every pregnancy is different is is very important. Um, but I don't know. I just, I think there's so many problems that can be solved by just communicating effectively. And that's not just, that's not a one shoe, like one size fits all, one shoe fits all. I don't know what the saying is, but it's something there. Um, <laughs> that's communication is different for every, every single person. So you have to understand how your partner <laughs> communicates and and uh, communicate in a way that makes them feel seen and heard. Uh, and if you don't do that, you end up with a vicious circle of ineffective communication. And well, I think that's what's happening. One shoe fits the gander. Let's yeah. go with that. Just blend know. blend three together. That's what's good for the goose. Good for uh, the, yeah, I, don't yeah. Know, uh, I don't know what a gander is. I, I see what you're saying. Um, and, and there's some comments on here, like, is she expecting him to... To check it every hour. It's a it's a bachelor weekend. I don't That's, think that was the expectation. I think I think he started giving the sus vibe with him behaving differently. And it wasn't yeah. a hey, it, you know what? If there was going to be a day where it was like, hey, I'm with the boys today. We're doing boys things. Like I'm going to be pretty much incommunicado because it's a boys thing. And if I pull my phone out and start getting lovey dovey with you, they're going to tear me to shreds. That would be a conversation we would have ahead of time. And I would set some expectations. Here it is a lack of communication. It's also a lack of, of expectations being set. If they had a plan going into this, they both could have contributed to that plan and had an understanding instead if it was just kind of fell together as it went and or fell apart as it went. Yeah, but it seems like if he didn't tell her about the strip club that they, this has been going on a lot longer than probably, right. probably even before the pregnancy. But I will say if, you're, if your bros are giving you shit about effectively communicating with your wife they're not your bros they're just being dicks i mean this kind of the bros thing to do though is just to be dicks to each other that's oh yeah i mean whatever but we do it openly and for fun instead of during clandestine methods with pettiness he got a haircut i got a haircut i have hairs everywhere there's a hair on his nose um don't burn your chicken before they hatch there you go i like that one Lack of respect. I'm going to go like sit down at my desk and try to understand what that means. I guess. <laughs> Love you, Tater. <laughs> uh, no, we don't have any updates on here, unfortunately. 2730 of 3K. We are 270 away. No. <laughs> one size fits all. One size fits all. Uh, Not one shoe yeah. fits all. If, if, if the shoe if fits. The shoe fits and one size fits all. <laughs> That's a good yeah. Don't burn your chickens before they don't hatch. Don't burn your chickens before they hatch, yeah. I mean, it wasn't, we haven't had a good candyism in a while. Yeah. I, I have been coming up with more candyisms lately, just just butchering statements that I'm trying to say. Oh, uh, time to solve a puzzle. You know what? I was, I was really wanting to solve a puzzle. I'm glad they did that. Shoes on the other foot. You prefer the candy version? Yeah. It's rocket surgery. There you go. Okay, 2730 3K, we need 270 more tiny dinies to get Caden Thunder and confetti. 
Also, as a reminder, if you're just now joining up with us, today is a fundraiser day. All of the gifts that we receive during the live are going to go to fund two things. We're funding Mission Protect the Cake, another run at that, because we delivered 50 cake kits today. Let me tell you. Friggin' amazing. We walked in. It was Community Support Services of Southwest Missouri, uh, who we who we work with um, and and do some marketing work for, and and reached out to them to see if this if they might be interested in receiving some cake kits. And the response back was hell yeah. Uh, they help hundreds of individuals with developmental disabilities in like a 16 county area. So they have a day program where every day, uh, 57, close to 60 individuals with developmental disabilities go have like camaraderie in a community and a structure during the day. It's like, it's something for them to do during the day. Um, uh, they do skills building, they do all kinds of things. And we were able to bring 50 cake kits to get almost everybody there a cake for their birthday this year. And they were so happy. Uh, I got a hug. They were dancing afterwards. Like it was a hell of a good time. It was so much fun. So we are we are uh, looking to fund more of those cake kits and to send my niece, Ava Lynn, to, uh, to her trip abroad for choir, which was the Missouri Ambassadors, what was it? Missouri Ambassadors of Music. There are 221 high school students across Missouri that got chosen for this, and it is to travel to London, Paris, Switzerland, Germany, and Austria. Holy crap. I wish I had gotten to do something like that. It's just flipping amazing. And we got there with Tiny Dinies. You guys are amazing as well. Thank you so much. TLS Journey in the number one spot here. We have Sergeant Mack. <laughs> Shit, I just pooped a little. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, could you come read the rest of the names? I need to go change my shorts. Just be glad it's not smell vision up in here. TLS Journey, Sergeant Mac, Mel J. Wolf, Opal, Lady of Poison, Anise Moon, Patricia, Catherine Slate, Hurn 2010, JTK All Day, and then Kellyanne, Meg's World, Bay Fox. Shan loves to read. Susan R. Smart, The Labyrinthian, Candy Thunder, Mama Joe, Da Boss, Bitch, Overkill Mill, La La Luru, Shannon Aaron, Junie, Junie B. Jones, Jenny Gardner, Adventures with Pam, Christine for JP, Tony Spark, Grade, Gray DW, J O Z, maybe Gray. I'll just go with Gray. Right? Rebel Wolf Marketing, Queenie E33, Beth Bars, Fane, Peggy Bias Jump, Tammy Chimes, Pinstride, Boo 77, Mama Buffy, Cassie Harrelson, Scent Underscore, Wendy Taylor, J Kilst One, and uh, Angelela, Angelela, that's a cool name, City Mouse NYC, who have hair all over me again, Firestar 06, and Poetica Rose. Thank you guys so much. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You have unlocked Caden Thunder and Confetti, which made me poop. Um, Suds by Sammy. Happy gosh, second birthday to you tomorrow. You're going to be 34 years old. Here, hold up. Hold up. Suds by Sammy. Did I finish reading? All I did. Yeah. We're going to get the happy birthday thing rocking for you here while I'm setting up the next goal. Heck yeah. The next one is going to unlock Tony feedback on a story. Heck yeah. There it is. Tony Spark. Giving feedback to a story with 120, just 120 paper cranes. Paper crane. Get some Boston legal for you. Paper crane. There we go. So that's my Sammy. I hope you have an awesome birthday. You get the B-Day dance and everything there. You get the B-Day dance. Okay, 120 paper cranes are going to unlock Tony feedback. We already got six. I have confetti just all over me. I'm being attacked. I'm being attacked. Candy Thunder sending out some paper cranes here. Also, Opal dropping them too. Heck yeah, Ellen. Ellen and Opal. Ellen and Opal. Opal and Ellen. Smarta. Opal, Ellen, Jerry, Lego Fourth. Sergeant Mac is in the mix now too. Darcy. Rogue. M. McCaskill. Thank you guys. You guys are running hard at it. We'll go ahead and dive into the next story here. Uh, is three the one you're giving feedback to? Yeah, so read. 
Okay, gotcha. All right. Hello there, it's Dusty Thunder again with another Reddit story for you. This one comes from the Dusty Thunder subreddit. Huh, would you look at that? And it's titled, Am I the astronaut for refusing to change the date of my daughter's birthday party to accommodate a friend? Oh, boy. Uh, this is a, yeah, throw a dart, see where you land. Poll is starting now. Title is, Am I the astronaut for refusing to change the date of my daughter's birthday party to accommodate a friend? As a reminder, uh, part of the fun of playing this game is that you take a guess without context, basically, and then see how far you how far off you were whenever the context rolls in. I'm going NTA. I'm going NTA. I could be wrong, but I'm going NTA. Hey, you guys are already past the 50% mark on the paper cranes. They want to see Tony Spark. That's what's going on. They want to see Tony Spark. They wore my coral to showcase my Yep. Tan. He wore his coral. Coral! He wore his coral shirt. He was showing off his tan. I got a lot of sun this weekend. And I was like, all right, Tony, let me see how close I am. And I held my arm up to his, and I was like, it looks, I look like a ghost next to you, Tony Dark. My goodness. Shan loves to read Rogue. Shan sent in a whole bunch of them through. You guys are running hard at it. 87 to 120. All right. Zero seconds. Here we go. 87% went NTA. 87%. ESH stands for everyone sucks here. 80 per, 87% chose NTA. And also, we're about to hit the paper crane right there. Wasn't it Caden Thunder and Confetti? It was. Caden Thunder. Uh, you want to pop up? Okay, you can pop up. Yeah, pop up and, and uh, say hi, and then I'll then I'll dive into the the body of this story here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get him up here, ladies and gentlemen. ladies and gentlemen. Kaden, Kaden, hi. How's everybody doing today? I'm chewing some minty gum. I just finished moving into my new apartment, so I've had a very long week, and I'm very tired. But, um, how are you all doing? It's me. What show are you watching right now? What show am I? I'm watching a whole bunch of show right now, guys. Um, um... <laughs> I'm watching The Boys because the new season just started coming out. So, you know, I got to watch The Boys. I'm watching Bridgerton. I'm watching House of the Dragon. I'm watching Doctor Who. I'm watching Perfect Match on Netflix. Um, Sabrina Carpenter. I have been told that I look like Sabrina Carpenter. Yeah. I have not watched Dark Matter, no. Do I have any plants? Probably. Doctor Who, yep. Dark Matter. I haven't watched Dark Matter. What's that? The Boys is fantastic. It's probably one of my favorite shows of all time. I love The Boys. No Bridgerton spoilers. Don't worry. No spoilers. I uh, I look like Dusty Thunder because I am, in fact, Dusty Thunder. Uh, I went through a change. Now I, we're here. Do I play Z? I don't. Favorite movie? That's really difficult. There's a lot of good movies. Uh, I don't know if I could pick a favorite movie. Mayor of Kingstown. I've been told I should watch that. Do I have pets? I have a cat named Pluto. He's a very lazy cat. She just kind of lays there. Emperor's New Groove is great. Yeah. Watch Fallout. Yes, I love Fallout. I love the games and the show. It's super, super great. The 100. Yeah, I've watched The 100. I've finished that show. I love The Office. I have a, I have a Ryan Funko Pop at my desk over there. Timey wimey wibbly wobbly thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I need to watch Dark Matter. It sounds like it's super cool. Favorite soup on the boys? Ah, oh. hmm. I don't know. I really like Soldier Boy actually because it's Jensen Ackles and I Supernatural fan. So, Soldier Boy. Yeah, yeah. No, but Soldier Boy is definitely my my favorite. <laughs> Homelander I like too, but I love to hate him. But Homelander is great. Yeah, Jensen Ackles. 
Me and Jensen Ackles, real close. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Supernatural is great. One of my favorite shows of all time, too. Uh, my favorite character from The Boys is Butcher, though. My favorite doctor, it's between 11 and 12. I really like the new one, though. Shitty Gat was doing really good. You should watch The Boys. Absolutely. That was scary. Uh, Dean. I choose Dean. I choose Dean! They got, they, got, uh, they got Jeffrey Dean Morgan in it, too. Uh, he's in The Boys now, too. They're trying to slowly get all the Supernatural cast members in there. All right. I like the 10th Doctor, but I, my Doctor I grew up with was 11. It was Matt Smith, so that's probably my favorite. But I really like 10 and 12, too. So, but 11. Um, well, I'm going to hand you back to Dusty Thunder now, but it's been, it's been real. It's been, it's been nice. It's been great. It's been dandy. Bow ties are cool, yeah. All right. Catch you later. Chain and Thunder, ladies and gentlemen. The, the eldest thunder child, heir to the throne, <laughs> heir to the throne. Uh, so, <sighs> this is a random aside. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, paper cranes. Yeah, we're we're there for paper cranes. Let's talk about that for a second, and then I'll tell you the random aside. TLS journey in the number one spot. Opal, lady of boys, and Shan loves to read. Not that Alan Golden Owl. What's up, buddy? Good to see you. Meg's World, Hoonacent underscore Kellyanne, and Jackie Dodge, Rogue, Bay Fox, Mel J. Wolf, Ms. No, NB, the G91, Candy Thunder, I'm sorry, Megif91, uh, Candy Thunder, Denise Burkhard, Sergeant Mac, Jerry Lee Go Forth, Queenie, Melissa McCaskill, Firestar, Flower Girl 77, we've got Low Manx, Low Maint Liz. Tony Spark, JTK All Day, and Smarta. One, two, three. Thank you all so much. You have unlocked Tony Spark giving feedback. Now we're going to go for a Best of Redditor update story and Candy Thunder feedback. B O R U story and Candy feedback. Boop. And. I've been feeling the rock vibes lately. Maybe it's summer. I don't know. 2K High Bears. That's what we're going for right now. As a reminder, today is a fundraising live. So we're funding Mission Protect the Cake and my niece, Ava Lynn, going abroad for, uh, for choir because she's musically a genius, apparently, which is great. So there we are. Now we'll dive back into our story here. Uh, okay, now the random aside. Now we'll dive back into the story. Those two things. Now and now, both at the same time. For anyone who has recently lost weight, like I, I went through losing like 30 to 40 pounds, lost a chunk of weight. Here's the problem. Nothing fits. Now, I tried to put on my Mission Protect, not Mission Protect the Cake, my Protect the Cake t-shirt. I have a whole bunch of Dusty Thundy, Dusty Thundy. <laughs> I am a nasty girl a long time. Uh, I think we just... I think we just unlocked something. We're going to have to come up with a brand, like a line of underwear and call them the Dusty Thundies. Uh, okay. I tried to go put on my Protect the Cake shirt. I'll have a whole bunch of Thunder-themed shirts back there. And I can't wear any of them because the size I used to wear looks like I'm wearing a freaking blanket. Looks like I'm wearing a poncho. I don't know. It's it. There is some pain associated with it. And I'd say like 75% of my closet, I still need to get rid of. I'm just like, I like these things, but they're all too big now. It's crazy. It's crazy. Wear them to bed. Yeah. But I mean, I don't, I'm not really a big PJ guy. You know what I mean? Dusty Thundy. <sighs> okay. Now, or, or are you showing me something? Caden said that we can still have the Dusties, but we'll make, we'll rename them the Thundies. <laughs> okay. So now we won't have to Okay. With the dusties. Yeah, so the Dusties may be dead, but we're going to we're going to start something new called the Thundies. I like it. I like it. T-shirt quilt, that may be the way to go. That may yeah, that may. That's my nightshirt. Tell Bob Cratchit I said hello. 
All right, here we go. The title of this story was, Am I the Asconaut for Refusing to Change the Date of My Daughter's Birthday Party to Accommodate a Friend? Feels like 12 years ago when we started this story. I, 36 female, have a friend, Mila, of five years, 35 female. We share the same cultural background and together with our partners have shared many social activities over the years. Although we live on opposite ends of the city, almost an hour apart. We've shared intimate details of our personal lives, and I've always appreciated her acceptance and support as I healed from a very difficult, no-contact family situation. When I got married two years ago, she didn't hesitate to help organize the wedding and be a witness for our marriage certificate. It was the sweetest surprise to find out on her wedding night that I was pregnant. A couple of weeks later, Mila called... Mila Video called me to announce the news that she too was pregnant and was about three weeks further along than me. I was delighted. Every week we text each other for pregnancy updates. It was so nice to it was so nice to go through pregnancy with a friend. Fast forward fast forward to when our babies were a few months old. We managed to meet up for brunch once, but those but the weekly texts had stopped. Soon I began seeing photos on social media of her out and about frequently with two mothers from her local parents group, Sal and Gia. I, too, had a parents' group, but it wasn't all that socially active. Mila previously had mentioned that I should come over to her house for a play date and stay all day since I live so far away. But a few weeks later, she changed her offer to a short visit of just a couple hours. I was disappointed, but drove the hour across town and back to see her anyway. On another occasion... On another occasion, Mila invited me on a group trip to the zoo last minute. When I got there, I couldn't help wondering whether she'd invited me because Gia dropped out. I got along fine with Sal. During our introductions, I mentioned my daughter's birth date, and she exclaimed that her son's was the same. A few more months went by, and the contact between Mila and I became sparse. Every time I texted her to start a conversation, she would say she has to go do something and then end it very, fairly quickly. Meanwhile, she, Sal, and Gia became best of buds, doing just about everything together. Then Mia traveled overseas. While abroad, she kept in regular touch with Sal and Gia by text and video call. I got no messages. Our babies were around nine months old now, and it was time to begin plans for first birthdays. I sent Mila the invite to my daughter's party more than two months in advance. She informed me that she had already been invited to Sal's son's birthday. Sal's son's birthday party on the same day at around the same time. I asked her what she wanted to do, and she said she wasn't sure. A few minutes later, she texted to ask how big my party was going to be because Sal was having a big one, and she'd hate to miss it. Dismayed and hurt by this line of questioning, I kept my cool and replied that we were having a low-key event with close friends. A few hours passed, and then she replied, I know it's a stretch, but do you think you could change your party to the following day? I really want to wish my daughter a happy birthday. Gobsmacked and further wounded, I responded with, Sorry, no, we prefer to celebrate my daughter's birthday on the actual day. I'm now reconsidering our friendship. I feel like I've been utterly disrespected by Mila and sad at the thought that motherhood has driven us rather apart than bringing us closer. I think she stopped putting effort into our five-year friendship now that she has a new local clique. So I don't want to change our plans and bend over backwards for someone who would probably not reciprocate. Am I the Askinaut? Ah, um, yeah, no, no, okay, no, you're not the asking for not wanting to change your kid's birthday party. <clears throat> I don't think that's the issue here. I don't think the birthday party is the issue. You're not an asshole for not doing that. Uh, and, and she said she knew it was a stretch, so she didn't expect you to do that either. It was just an option she was throwing out. Now, in your friend's defense here, she's trying to play, she's trying to have a foot in both worlds still. Like the, the other world has consumed her clearly it's and because it's there, it has proximity. It is, she's able to be, to be friendly with them more often. You're not that far away though. She could reach out more if she wanted to. Um, my, my question for you, if I may be so bold is you talk a lot about her not reaching out to tend this relationship. You talk a little bit about you reaching out and trying to initiate conversation as well, and her cutting that short, which I understand, but how much more effort beyond that have you have you given? It can't all be on her, and it can't just be like she's busy, so our conversations are kept short. Also, people grow apart. People live gets crazy, especially when you have kids. It is really hard to maintain friendships. It really stinking is. And if she has a local clique and they do things together, I think you have to, you already know that that organically takes on a life of its own. You already know that your lack of proximity with her makes makes her more likely to do things and grow closer with them. You already know those things. I think the big issue is that you don't have those things. 
and she does. If you had those things locally as well, I don't think you would not care, but you wouldn't be bothered by this situation. It's the fact that she has those things and you don't. So there's there's additional sting to it, right? You're not an asshole. I think there's you have to understand that this this pain you're feeling is not just the realization that a friend has moved on and that their life has changed and, and they've outgrown the life that you guys used to have together. It is the understanding that she is doing that because she has something that you do not. And there's probably just, just an extra sting with it there. You're not an asshole. I don't think your friend's an asshole either. Her throwing out the option of you moving, it was her only chance at being able to come to your thing too. So understand that. She wasn't trying to be disrespectful to you. That's not the vibe that I get at least. She's trying to hang on with this relationship she has with you by a thread and still trying to keep at least something there. She probably could do more, but life is freaking busy. And it sounds like her local click here has her pretty wrapped up and busy as well. Um, so maybe there just needs to be a really honest conversation between the two of you and be like, look, this life has taken us different directions. And I think you need to be honest with her and be like, look, I'm happy for you. I'm happy that you have this. I need you to understand that I don't have this. And that makes it hurt just a little bit more. Uh, and maybe that will lead to to more inclusion by her with your friend group. Maybe it will. Um, maybe that could lead to a solution. If you guys are real friends and can tell each other what you truly mean, it could lead to a solution. I don't think either one of you are assholes here. Um, there, if there was an EDSH, I would use it. Everyone doesn't suck here. N-A-H. No assholes here. Why did I automatically like uh, I, I, I automatically like uh, read that as a doctor in a scene who is like trying to perform some kind of exam and he's like, there are no assholes here. What about, Something's wrong. What about the title? In response to the title, the just... response to the title is uh, refusing to change the date. No, that's an NTA. We talked about that. It's an NTA. You're not an asshole. OP for refusing to change the date of your daughter's birthday party. And she didn't expect you to, she said she knew it was a long shot. You're an also, you're also not an asshole situationally here. And I don't think your friend is either. Oh God. Krista museum girl says I changed my wedding date for a former friend. She still didn't come. Don't change the date. Holy shit. That sucks. No ass cons detected. Hey, a flower, crystal Wilson. Chris Jal, 307, Dark Angel, Opal, Wolfie Shadow, Kellyanne, Tony Spark. Excuse me. Mouse Princess, Tony Spark again. Danny Danae reads. Epilepsy Fighting Mama. We are at 380 of 2K with high bears. We need a lot more high bears. Tony Spark, Angie, Melissa Takal, Wolf, Catherine Slate, Angie, Melissa. Again, as a reminder, today is a fundraiser for Mission Protect the Cake, where we create cake kits and send them out to area organizations who help people who may not have a birthday cake otherwise. Uh, and we delivered 50 today. Can't wait to see that video upon its completion. It's a... Uh, <clears throat> We walked in, um, they had their entire day group there, which is close to 60 people with developmental disabilities. And uh, we brought all 50 cake kits in and then we, we talked a little bit um, amongst our, ourselves and with the admin staff there. And then they let me make an announcement to all of the day program participants there. And it was, uh, I feel like it was a magical moment. I don't know. It was really, really cool to be able to see the faces of the people that we're helping and to see their appreciation. I got a hug. It was a big, it's a big deal. Um, there's, there was a guy who had a, uh, a birthday, like a birthday hat on. Um, apparently his birthday is every day. It's 365 days a year. It's, his birthday is every day. Uh, but of course, you know, he had a birthday hat on. So I took one of the Dusty Thunder Ask on, Ask Not stickers and uh, he let me put the sticker on his, on his crown. It was very cool. It was very, very cool. We delivered 50. We did, Shinryota. 50, yeah. 50 at one time. That's crazy. That's a lot of cake. Luckily, they have the room to be able to, to store it. But my goodness. My goodness. Uh, okay, we are still going for high bears here. We need 1,500 more to hit this next goal. But y'all unlocked Tony Spark giving some feedback on a story here. So I'm going to read that one, and then he's going to talk about it. Unless you want to read the story, Tony Spark, you want to do that? No. Just want to give feedback. All right. That's what I'll do. Uh, 
Uh, Elise Newman, Tony Spark, the weekend is almost here. We are off today, and I took PTO the next few days. Get in the sun. She's at the lake. Oh, nice. Hey, we're we're having team day at the lake next Thursday. I'm pumped. Pumped. Uh, 50% because of the lake. 50% because Tony's going to cook for us that day. So excited. <gasps> Ava Lynn has arrived. Hello, love. How are you? Doing quite well. Uh, Candy Thunder, do you want to prep? Do you want to prep her first? Okay. I'll go ahead and read this next story. And uh, we'll get Tony's feedback, and then we'll have Ava Lynn come up here. How about that? How about the M apples? Do you like apples? 520 at 2K right now on High Bears. We're still going on that. We're at 69% of the likes goal today. Don't forget to like, share the stream. We greatly appreciate that, and it helps us a lot. Sharing helps more than you know. Stay at home mom, Miss Helene, Potato Pile, Miss Kitty, Candy Thunder, Anna Hartman, Smarter, Miss Helene again there, Boo Boo, Elise Newman, Christian, Miss Lewis, Sergeant Mac. Uh, we've got Franny. Silver Calico Creations, Kelly Ann, Christian Museum Girl, Moon. Thank you guys so much. Here we go. Hey, there's Dusty Thunder with another Reddit story for you again. This one again from AITA. But we're going to get some feedback from Tony Spark on this one. Holy cow. This one is titled, Am I the Astronaut for Sending a Venmo Request for Babysitter, Hotel, and Uber Reimbursement After a Dry Wedding? I can't imagine why Tony would want to get feedback on this story. <laughs> I have thoughts. Yeah, I imagine you do. Okay, poll has started right now. The The question is, am I the astronaut for sending a Venmo request for babysitter hotel and Uber reimbursement after a dry wedding? Also, Dusty, what would what are your thoughts on what you think that I would say? That. Like, what do you think uh, my rating would be? Uh, I think uh, I think you're probably at ask on one. Oh, wait, no, no, no. For for OP, this specific question, I think you're NTA because you're like, who the hell wants to go to a dry wedding? Also, if you got kids and you're going to a wedding, it's a big deal to, I imagine, to get everything put together and you get there and there's no booze. What the hell? Why are you here? He's an NTA. <laughs> be like, he'd be like, I'd take back my wedding gift. <laughs> I take back my wedding gift, return it, and use that as the reimbursement. <laughs> take that. I wouldn't go to a dry wedding. Uh, one second left here. I still haven't voted here. Um, I'm gonna say, gosh dang it. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say ask on two. I'm gonna say this is a two thing. Prom- something you definitely should not do. Now maybe they didn't advertise that it was a dry wedding. I don't know. I don't know. A dry wedding is probably better than a dry wedding night. All right, let's dive into the story here and see where we are at. <sighs> Question again was, am I the astronaut for sending a Venmo request for babysitter hotel and Uber reimbursement after a dry wedding? A friend from college got married this past weekend. The wedding was 45 minutes from my house, so my wife and I got a hotel room. We checked in, had a few pregame cocktails, and Ubered from the hotel to the venue. We sit down, and the wedding happens. It's beautiful. We go to our social hour, as it's called, and there is no booze. Turns out this was a dry wedding. There was no indication that this was a dry wedding before showing up. I checked the digital version of the invite and website, nothing indicating this. I'm pissed for a few reasons. I might not have RSVP'd if I knew this. I'm pissed I blew a few hundred bucks on a hotel for the night, babysitters and Uber. I'm like, what the fuck? Other friends that were there grumbling and felt similar to me. The night went on and the wedding was fine, but honestly a bit of a bummer. Now that my wife and now that my wife and I have kids, night like nights like this are rare. And I was pumped to do something. So we dipped out a bit early and went on. So we dipped out a bit early and went out. Other friends rolled with us. We left in the middle of the dancing time and didn't stay for the exit. Later that night, I sent a Venmo request for the cost of a babysitter, hotel, and Uber. Yesterday, I heard from my college buddy. He was like, what the fuck is this, asshole? I explained I was mad that this was a dry wedding. The bride had family that were alcoholics, so they opted to not have alcohol as an option. I told him that was need to know information. Not informing us of that cost me and our other friends a lot of money. He said I should have asked him and not assumed it was a wet wedding. I said to him, alcohol is a default option. If you change the default, you tell people. He disagreed with that notion. I said, you drink. Why would I think it's dry? He went back. We went back and forth for a while. He still thinks I'm an asshole. Am I? 
And here to give some feedback on this wonderful story is the one and only Tony Spark. Let's get an introduction going for him now, shall we? Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen. Tony Tony Spark. Spark. What's up, everybody? I have some thoughts on this. I'm going to be honest. I have some thoughts and maybe maybe you guys think of the reaction that I'm going to give would be that OP is not the asshole. But let's get into that. First off, a dry wedding is an unfortunate event. I'll be honest. Like, I get it. If you want to have a dry wedding, that's great. You probably like I've been. Let me give you a little experience. I was in a wedding, one of my best friends. And it was going to be a dry wedding. And we were all very confused by this dry wedding because his family drinks, her family drinks. They're both Catholic. Most of y'all know how that goes. So we were like, we're excited for the wedding and the party and blah, 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 blah. And he's like, oh, it's going to be a dry wedding. And the reason why it was a dry wedding is because uh, it was at a venue that did not allow alcohol because it was a, it was a venue that, the, that his, his bride-to-be wanted to be fair, me and my best friend offered to pay for alcohol for the entire wedding, and we found him a venue, and that they were going to give him a venue for free. Didn't change, whatever. But they were super cool about it because they were like, "Hey, it's a dry wedding, but uh, the venue has even said like you just can't drink in the building. Keep in your car." He, our groomsmen, gifts were like little yetis with our names on them and stuff, and then with booze in them and all that, and it was taken care of, and that's fine. Uh, I think what OP did here is kind of an asshole move. I think that uh, I understand being upset if it's uh, I understand being upset that it was a dry wedding because I'll be honest, it makes weddings less fun. I get it. I know that you do like you don't have to drink to have fun, but that's the best part of a wedding. Like I'm not going to go to the wedding for the mushy doves flying flowers and people standing up like it's great. You love each other. Fantastic. That's amazing. Happy for you. Super. It's a celebration. It's a celebration of your love and it's happy and it's beautiful, but let's wrap it up and go to the party because that's when everybody has fun. You don't have fun sitting there in the church. So you want to go have fun. But um, yeah, I don't think, uh, Dusty, you said I would say that OP was not the asshole, but I think this is an ASCON 2 move. Whoa. Because I, even though it's a dry wedding and you may be disappointed, to send a Venmo request to the groom and be like, listen, your wedding was boring and I didn't like it. So I'm going to need you to go ahead and pay for me having to be there. Like, that's a dick move. Agreed. That's a dick move. So, OP, what you should have done is you just take an Uber. That's fine. But you know what you should have done? Just drive your car there. Put a cooler in the back of the car. Get together with some of your other friends. Maybe yeah, one, hey. maybe, maybe one of the other friends. He's saying he took an Uber to the deal. Maybe one of his other friends didn't. Whoever's driving there, pack a cooler. You guys go out in the parking lot, have a few beverages back and forth in between. No big deal. I'm sure the groom honestly probably wouldn't have cared. They would have rather you did that than send him a Venmo request and be a dick on their wedding yeah. day. Like, they he don't want to deal with that. He did it later that night, so he, you know he was a blitz when he was like, you know what? I'm going to send that for a Venmo request right now. I mean, It's going to be for the babysitter? I'm going to say, hotel. I would have done it maybe as a joke, but I don't think yeah. this guy was joking. But there's... There you go. That's a great, that's a great comment. There's other ways to elevate that aren't alcohol. You could have taken that, gone Uber to the wedding, still had a great time and not had a drop to drink. But listen, I'm, <laughs> I'll probably go to the wedding if it's a dry, it's not a deal breaker that I'm not going to go to the wedding. I'm not going to have fun. I'll be honest. Wait, wait, so how, okay. Like I'm just not going to have fun. Uh, Google Queen Cat, they didn't know it was dry. Yeah, we're we're aware. It, I think it's how he handled that information. Instead of just going out and partying with the buddies and being like, yeah, that blew, it's the Venmo request. The Venmo yeah. request. Somebody says a dollar as a joke, sure, but not the real price. Yeah, that would have been funny. I think that would have been funny. And it have been like, yeah. here, you're buying me a drink because I'm at a bar now because you had a dry wedding. So, but yeah, no, it was a dick move. Uh, dick move by OP here. I, I, uh, I mean, you can give him shit. I mean, I would have, we gave our buddy a lot of grief for it and he just played right along with it and it was fine. And his, his bride was right along with it. He played along with it. We had a great time. I even, funny story at that wedding, we're all there. Pretty much everybody at this wedding, most of them are Catholic, especially on his side, all of our friend group. We're all there. And this is kind of like a, 
And we're kind of all sitting around twiddling our thumbs at the wedding. Now, granted, while we were getting ready for the wedding, we went to the bar early. Pre-game. We had they pre-gamed too. Though. We we pre-gamed. pre-gamed. We pre-gamed. We had a cooler in the back, behind the church. We, it was a whole thing. So we go to the wedding and we're out there at this outdoor thing. Of course, you got to go take all the pictures and all that stuff, which is not fun when you're not drinking, taking f- photos in the woods and dressed up in suits, all of that, whatever. So um, we're standing there with the priest who we all know really well. And one time I said, hey, Father Jay, what's the chances of like a water and a wine miracle at this wedding? <laughs> and he was like, well, he's like, I'm afraid that's a little above my pay grade. <laughs> I was like, well, I tried, but. Respect, respect. Yeah, so OP. Holy cow. Ask on too. You guys thought you guys thought I was gonna come out here and just completely say like and I'm not saying you have to have alcohol to have fun, but you know, again, a little if you would have just had a little heads up, maybe I beg my finest pardon, I was wrong. A little a little heads up would have been good. Then he could have properly prepared for the wedding. Like that's the thing. We knew it was a dry wedding going into it. We were prepared. We knew what to do. The, the bride and groom made sure that we had everything we needed to have a great time, and we had a great time. But yeah, don't have a dry wedding. <laughs> don't have a dry wedding. Don't have a dry wedding. Oh. Like, <laughs> people, what's about, what, what is the part of the wedding you remember? Do you remember the Bible verse that they read up there? Do you remember the flowers? Do you remember the, no. Do you remember, do you remember who got up there and, and did the stanky leg on the dance floor in the middle of the night after doing, that's what you remember, the fun, the party, the conversations, the interacting. Sometimes people need a little, without that, think about the people who need a drink or two to kind of loosen up and and talk and be like interactive and let their extrovert come out a little bit. They need that. So without that, boring wedding. (laughs) Just saying. Just saying. All right, I'll get Ava. We'll and get I Ava. understand. Ladies and gentlemen. But, yeah. Tony Spock. Ask Yeah, uh, you know, I, I, this is a bit of a, an odd topic for me because we don't really get invited out to stuff. I don't know if people just don't like us or if we don't have friends or something. We, we just We just don't get invited to things. So I don't have experience to talk about, like, you know, what to do with weddings because we don't go to a lot. Uh no, I, I get it. I get it. It's probably something that should have been communicated ahead of time, and you can give him shit for that. But the Venmo request was just a dick move. So, like, not that, not that. Like, I understand the frustration. Dry wedding doesn't sound like fun at all. And if there was an expectation that it wasn't going to be dry, and you feel like that should have been communicated, then communicate that. But don't do it by sending a freaking Venmo request. I understand he was probably blitzed whenever he did that. So there's some funny context to it, but still it was a dick move. And Tony Spark goes as con two on it. Holy cow. Now, before we move on here, uh, we have a special guest that I would love for you to talk to. By the way, we're at 661 of 2K on the high bears. One of the things that we are fundraising for today is my niece, Ava Lynn, is going with the Misery Ambassadors of Music abroad and apparently is leaving like here in just a few days so let me bring her up and let her tell you a bit about this ladies and gentlemen let me introduce avalyn hey guys one of missouri's finest finest musicians or or, or uh, musically musically talented individuals here right allegedly allegedly allegedly, <laughs> allegedly. okay tell, tell us a little bit about this uh about this whole shindig Okay, so basically, like last year, at the end of the school year, I got like this big envelope during band, and they were like, hey, you're invited to go to Europe with us for like 15 days. If you want to, you got to pay, but you're more than welcome to come with us. And we're going to five different countries. We're going to London, Paris, Switzerland, Austria, and Germany, and we're going to play in concerts, and there's also a choir going and a jazz band. We're going to go sightseeing and spend lots of money, and it's going to be really fun. Yeah. Dang. I'm excited. Okay, so where all are you going again? London, Paris. Somewhere in Switzerland, someone somewhere in Germany, and then somewhere in Austria. I don't remember the towns, but that's where we're going. How freaking do you know how long you're staying in each one of these spots? Like three days. And you get to you get to perform at each spot? Yep. In each country. Oh my gosh. It's gonna be awesome. I hope you know what? If this would have happened whenever I was I was your age, um, cell phones that took photos didn't exist yet. So like I wouldn't be able to even document that unless someone had a camera camera with mm-hmm. them. But you are going to be able to just like film and and take pictures of every moment of this and relive it. But how? What are you most pumped for? Let me let me put it that way. I think sightseeing and just getting to experience the different cultures because I've really only left the country like twice, 
and it's not been across like the pond, you know, yeah. it's been to, like Mexico and Belize, which those places are awesome, but it's going to be different. I, I, I don't know why, but, but like an Alexis line just jumped into my head. Uh, like I've only left the country twice and only one of those times was, was legal. Uh, <laughs> the second time I was on a date with one of the cartel or, you know, uh, <laughs> that's where my head went immediately. So, so this is for vocal performance, right? I'm going with the band, but oh, there you are? is, okay. yes. Okay. I had the option to do both, but I didn't want to stress myself. It's out. really hard so, to play the bass car- clarinet and sing at the same time. Yeah, mm. I could probably pull it off. I really tried like really hard. I did. I I've, I figured out a way to sing a note while playing the trumpet and it creates a growl. And if you can sing the note perfectly in tune, it, like you can hear the wavelengths like shorten and then flatten out. But the further apart you get those notes, the ones that you sing and that you play, it creates a dissonance that creates like the growl. It's it's interesting. Can you still do that? Uh, Yeah. Probably. Yeah. yeah, I'm not going to do it on stream, uh, but but yeah, I think probably, probably so. I'll try to film it. Um, <laughs> Shin Ryota says, thank God nobody documented my band trips. We went to the Peach Bowl when I was in band. That was that was our big thing. Uh, but I did have I did have the opportunity to to uh, audition for Bugle Corps um, and was asked to audition for Bugle Corps and never did. Because I was I was entering my like I like to party phase uh, and and that was more important, which I now deeply regret because it would have been such an experience. Uh, and this feels like kind of a a shortened a shortened version of that where you don't have to sleep on gym floors and stand out in the yeah, heat and wear a marching quite. uniform to do that kind of thing. So you're going for band? Are you going for um, for orchestra band or for jazz band or which just which like version? standard concert band? Gotcha. And then there is a jazz band going, but. I'm not doing that. Wait, one. so you guys are getting together for a couple of days in St. Louis to practice first. So you basically learn your entire show in a couple of days and then go abroad to perform it. Yep. We had a meeting in Columbia, Missouri, like over Easter weekend. And that's when we saw the music for the first time and played together for like an uh, hour. So you've been able to practice between then and now? We're supposed to practice between <laughs> then and now. So you're being taken to Europe. You've been taken abroad. Yeah, to look I'm, cute. I obviously, I know, okay. <laughs> it's for the experience, not for yeah. them to like pluck me as a as a world class musician. No, not quite. <laughs> uh, so your your experience with band to this point, um, when did what did you already? Words are hard. I'm sorry. I, words are hard for me to say. Did you start on clarinet? Yes, I started on clarinet in middle school. Okay. Uh, did you ever? What all instruments have you experimented with? Um, clarinet. Barry sax, tenor sax, and then bass clarinet. But Barry and tenor didn't last very long. Really? Yeah. I always wanted to play tenor sax. I think it's such like a cool, such a cool instrument. Yeah. Like I Joshua have... Redman. He may play. No, he's tenor. It's such a cool sound. So it just, I don't know. Yeah. That and cello, like two things. Oh, I did like, play cello for a while. Nice. I forgot about that one. That is, that is super stinking cool. I really liked it. When, and you depart Sunday? Monday. Sorry? Monday. Like Monday morning. We fly out of St. Louis. Holy cow. It's going to be awesome. I'm very proud of you. And well, thank super you. super happy for you that you get to do this thing. And we're we're still fundraising today. So Woo. we're at 941, 960 now with 2K on the high bears. And as a reminder, we're fundraising for two things today. One of them is for Avalyn's trip abroad, which starts next week. So uh, we'll help her in any way that we can. The other thing that we're fundraising for is the Mission Protect the Cake as it continues. And we donated 50 cake kits today, so we're still going on that. Um, anything else you want to let them know about your trip? Um, will you send us pictures that we can share with them? Yes, I will. And I'm also going to post on my Instagram, underscore Ava, underscore Spencer, underscore. How Here many underscores that. are there? Three. Three <laughs> underscores? Yep. Wait, say that again. Underscore Ava, underscore Spencer, underscore. S-P-E-N-C-E-R. Yes. Okay. Yep. <laughs> she, oh. Hey, it'd be really funny if she got more followers than Tony Spark right now. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> All that Tony Spark. <laughs> That would be hilarious. All right, Ava, thanks so much for coming up. Thank you. Love you. Hope you Love have you. a blast. I will. I'll Holy send you pictures. Cow. Yes, please Wait. do. Thank you, everyone. Bring me back something nice. I will. <laughs> Maurice. Or it's Marie, the baguettes. Uh, yeah, try to bring some food back. Let's see how it goes. Hey, there you go. Candy Thunder just uh, just commented the 
her handle on Insta if you want to if you want to follow her over there and watch the updates as they go. But we are still rocking and rolling, and we've already jumped up quite a bit. We're at 1121 2K right now for the High Bears. Um, as a reminder, those two things are the things we're fundraising for today. So it is Mission Protect the Cake and Avalon's Trip. Uh, we're going to try to throw some love her way as much as possible. What we're trying to unlock right now is a Best Averted or Update story and Candy Thunder feedback. So... We will keep bebopping along into our next story here. Before I do that, Bay Fox Adventures with Pam with the Galaxy. Two times, heck yes. Uh, we've got Karen Kaufman, Wendy Taylor, Summer, TLS Adventures with Pam, Jessica's Shadow, Opal, Summer, Call Me Becky, your Bex, Candy Thunder, Mary. Hey, well, then we'll see you later. Bye. Thank you for coming in. Uh, Eps- Epilepsy Fighting Mama, Meredith Vicari, Tony Spark, Road, Meredith again there. There was a gnat. There is a bug flying around, and it likes my lights. Peggers, Jelly 5, Epilepsy Fighting Mama again there, Jelly 5, Jessica's Shadow, Donna DJ, Pam, Destiny Lily, thank you guys so much, greatly appreciate it, Jessica's Shadow again, Margie, Wendy Taylor, Shannon Aaron, Adventures with Pam, you guys are awesome, <laughs> greatly appreciate it, uh, Ellie Birch just followed Ava, heck yeah, nice, 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 all right, we're, gi- we're diving, diving into the next story, we're diving into the next story, here we go. Uh, we have 10 minutes left, so this this hopefully will update the best reverted or update, and we'll get to read that before we end the stream today. Let's see. 1280 at 2K. All right. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder again with another Reddit story for you. This one is from AITA and is titled, Am I the Askinaut for Telling My Wife She Sucks With Money? <laughs> Probably makes it worse that I say it like that. But that's what felt right. Let's go ahead and get our poll started here. Starting now. Question is, am I the astronaut for telling my wife she sucks with money? I had to read it the exact same way. Hey, Miss Lily. Me? Oh, sorry, I was reading comments. <laughs> what did you say? Nothing. Bay Fox. Uh, they wanted to know how Ava was related to you. Yes, uh, Ava is my niece. She is my sister's daughter. My older sister, Bree, her daughter. Uh, yeah, you, you guys have not met Bree yet, I don't think. You've met Tipsy Thunder. Uh, Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm, sorry, I'm having trouble tracking that, but yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. I understand. So yeah, a- Ava Lynn is to my sister what Caden Thunder is to me, like her her younger spitting image off, offspring. Okay, we ended up with 24% a narrow victory here for NTA. A narrow victory. Am I the asking off for telling my wife she sucks with money? I, you know what? I'm going to go... I'm going to go ask on two, just to change it up here. We'll see what happens. I guess she's the not-so-tipsy thunder. Okay, my wife, 30 female, and I, 32 male, got into an argument yesterday regarding her spending habits, and she is giving me the cold shoulder. My wife likes to buy things and is an impulsive buyer. She gets this from her mother for who... Sorry, words are hard. She gets this from her mother who is the same way. I, on the other hand, look for deals or don't mind buying them secondhand. When I go grocery shopping, I price match or find things on sale where she doesn't care about the price and just purchases. The one that gets me all the time is she'll buy one pound of strawberries from the grocery store for $5.99 when there's a price match for $2.99. She doesn't purchase expensive things, but the things she buys for herself or our daughter just add up. I budget and she blows it. She also wants to travel the world, but does not take into consideration our current debt. Rewind to yesterday. We found a photographer on Instagram to do photos for our daughter in which she has preset packages. Similar similar to the ones for school. She sent us the waterproofs. The waterproofs? She sent us the proofs of the photos and the pictures in which we can only pick two poses per package. Is the waterproofs? Is that right? Watermarks. Watermarks. Okay, I'm like, what? what? She sent us the watermarks of the photos. Are they calling waterproofs? The water... Watermarked proofs. Or they call... Do they call those waterproofs? Like watermarked proofs. That could be a new term that I just don't know about. 
Okay, I'll just say this. She sent us the watermarked proofs of the photos and in the pictures in which we can only pick two poses per package. My wife likes 10 of the 30 pictures and wants to buy multiple packages. I told her that I would call the photographer to see if she would be willing to send the raw photos of the 10 poses so that we could print whichever she would like to print. Oh, you don't ask a photographer for the raws ever. How dare you? She replied, why are you always so difficult? Just pay for the packages. I replied that it would be close to $700 for these prints. I then told her that her budget is always fucked for this type of behavior and she sucks with money. There was a back and forth. She called me an asshole and slept in... She called me an asshole and slept in my daughter's room last night. We didn't communicate verbally over the phone or through text all day. Her sister texted me saying that she is on my side, whereas her older sister and younger brother think I'm the asshole. Why is the extended family involved now? When she came home, I got the silent treatment for the majority of the evening. We didn't have dinner together. When I was washing my dishes, she left her plate on the stove, and and I turned to her to say, the raw pictures for the 10 pictures cost $400. She called me an asshole and walked upstairs. I left the house, but it got me thinking, am I the astronaut? Um... <laughs> No, but yeah, for asking for raws, uh, don't do that. Don't, don't. If you hire a photographer or a video person, don't ask for the raw. Just don't. Just don't. It's a no-no. The interpretation that the artiste, photographer or video person, um, their interpretation is what happens in the coloring, not just in the framing, not just in the click, not just in the data that is stored on the memory card. It is in the coloring. It is in the finished product. And asking for the raw is asking for them, asking them to give you a 25% baked pie or cake. It's goo. Don't do it. However, however, that's an asshole move, asking for the raws. You just don't do that. Uh, you are not the asshole for telling your wife she sucks with money. Because she does. You guys have budgets. Now, here's... It might be an ESH, actually. This might end up being an ESH. Because it sounds like it sounds like communication is a real issue here. You're beating your head against a brick wall because whatever constraints you've tried to impose here, she's not following. It's just not happening. So find a system that does make sense to her find a system that she will follow find something that works for both of you right now you're trying to follow the way that works for you and she's trying to follow the way the way that works for her obviously that's putting you in a precarious position financially here obviously that's hurting you both as a as a couple it's hurting you as a household i understand that like she's causing you damage i get that she's not right that's asshole behavior on her part, ignoring the limits of reality that you have tried to put in front of her. I think there's also an obligation here for you to take this as a learning moment, though, and to say, okay, if she doesn't understand this, how can I do this in a language she does understand? There's got to be some way to shape this beyond just clamping down because the next step in your current approach here is to basically like cancel her cards, you know, what I mean? limit her control or access to the money. Her pulling in the, the family and being like, I'm going to get my family involved with this and see what they think and then have a message my husband. I'm like, that's, that's, that's an asshole move on her part as well. So she's, she's climbing up higher than you on the ask on scale by pulling in the family, by just not listening, by just calling you an asshole, not seeking any kind of solution here at all. She's the bigger asshole. But I think there's something that you can do differently here as well. Um, I am going to stick with, I'm going to stick with NTA for you here. Because I don't think you've tried to this point. You might be the only one trying. However, um, I would love for you to look at this and be like, this is a challenge. How do I, how do I, how do I achieve this in a way that makes sense to her, in a way that gets her on board? How do I get buy-in from her and make this something she does care about? It's a challenge. Uh, and I think if you if you look at it that way. You can probably come up with some other options and start thinking of, of play to your audience here. You built a system for you. Build a system for her. Likes goal achieved, ladies and gentlemen. Way to go. And for all of you family members here uh, pushing for those, those likes and shares to continue, uh, thank you so much for, for being a driving force behind that. Greatly appreciate that. We're at 1740 of 2K right now here as well. So you guys are a rocking and a rolling. Uh, we hit the likes goal. 
Hit the like skull. Look at you go. Hey, I'm Marisa Talavera. We got KJ Catastrophe, Theosaurus Rex, Catastrophe again there, Hunter Girl, June, Rogue, NA, Queen Dobe, Pilus Via, Bay Fox, Catherine Slight, La Princesa, Joyful Stranger, Wendy Taylor, the RK Experience, Queen B, the RK Experience, and Queen B again, NA, Queen B with the first gift, a lightning bolt, Ms. Kitty, Drea, Aaron Biederman, NA, Jordan, Stay at Home Mom, the RK Experience, TLS, Aaron Biederman again there, Catastrophe, Bay Fox, Jordan, Denny's, NA, Reads, thank you all so much. Denise Bustard, Shannon Aaron, Catastrophe, Hunter Girl, Jasmine Stubbs, thank you. Mary, see you there as well. Thank you so much. Greatly appreciate it. Greatly, greatly. 1882 a 2K right now. Um, there, yeah, in, in this past story, I think there's a communication issue, right? And, and in this isolated incident, he's an NTA. She definitely sucks more. But I think... Either this is going to destroy you or you're going to find a way past it, right? And and marriage, I feel like, is is about every time you're faced with that decision, faced with what feels like an impasse, finding a solution, finding a way to do life together, not independently. And yeah, it'd be great if she got on board with your system here, but it's not happening. So what are you going to do? What kind of solution are you going to present? I challenge you to be brilliant, I challenge you to, to solve the unsolvable. That's fucking marriage. Give it a shot. Holden, you're having uh, trouble seeing your chat on TikTok studio. Uh, so you can pop chat out if you uh, collapse it and then bring it back in. That may work to bring it back, but also there, I think there are different views that you can, that you can get here. So you might have one of the different views enabled. Uh, it, it might just need updated too. Mine updates like every time I open it. All right, you done did it and hit the high bears goal. It is five o'clock. Do we have time to read that, that uh, best reverted or update story? Sweet. I've been given the green light. We're going long today, ladies and gentlemen. TLS Journey in the lead on this high bear goal. Jessica Shadow, Catherine Slate, Candy Thunder One, Quinn Sampson, Opal, Lady of Poison, Stay at Home Mom from New Mexico, Wendy Taylor, Anna 414, Theo Dino Rex, Jordan, na 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 Franny, Wyoming, yes. Tony Spark, Bay Fox, Shannon Adderin, Smiles 420, Hunter Girl, Eeny B. Mel J. Wolf, Elise Newman, Da Boss, BH, Kelly Ann, Janice C, Ms. Lewis Adventures with Pam, AK Mary, Summer Diamond, Art, Rogue, Junie B. Jones, Sergeant Mac, Omen Loves Disney, Jody Smith 145. We've got um Kath's the name. I almost said Kath's the name. Saw the gauge, had to pause. Kath. Kath's the name. Nicole P, Anna Hartman, El Marine, Sassy Lil Bit. I'm all set, bitch. Joyful Stranger, Destiny Lily, Meredith Vicari, Keith Ijim. We've got Cristial, Yvette, Bex. We've got Flower Girl, Jilly55, Cassie Harrells, and Miss Helene's house. Thank you all so much. Greatly appreciate that. You have unlocked the best reverted or update story and candy feedback. The next one that we'll get up here is for a cookie reward story and the helmet. A helmet. Doesn't specify which one. We got a lot to choose from. Um, we'll go ahead and get this started. Do what? Cookie story and helmet. Okay, started. We're going for donuts right now, but we're also diving into a best of Redditor update story. Let's do it. What? We're obsessed with these, like paint mixing color videos. <laughs> I get it. It's funny. I get it. Can we make some dusty thunder? There, so there, there's a question for you. While we're while we're getting dove into this story, uh, they were talking about like stupid videos that they somehow are fascinated by and just enjoy, like paint mixing. The paint mixing videos. What is your, what, <laughs> at least don't use your mic. We're all too, no, too nosy not to hear. 
Rug cleaning videos. What is your guilty pleasure, like uh, like oddly satisfying video, other than Dusty Thunder stories? What what is your power washing videos? Power rug washing cleaning videos. Yeah. The paint mixing ones. Cake decorating. Um. Also, there's these with the Nate the Hoof guy. It's, it's like a video game one where they're like, "How can this car make this jump?" Have you seen those over like the container, yeah. and then they yeah. smash and like, yeah. Then my algorithm gets filled with them, and I have to keep swiping <clears throat> to get past. Them. Organizing, soap cutting. That's interesting. Okay, so we've got you. We've got you thinking on that. And now we'll start the best of redditor update story. Hey there, it's Dusty Thunder once again. This time with the best of redditor update story. This one is parents opened up several credit cards in my name while I was away at college. They racked up more than fifteen grand in debt, and now they want me. And now they want me to kick me out. Wait, what? And now they want to kick me out because I brought it up. I'm going to read the whole thing over again. Parents opened up several credit cards in my name while I was away at college. They racked up more than 15 grand in debt, and now they want to kick me out because I brought it up. All right. Uh, we're going to do the poll for this. I know it's not an AITA, but we're still going to gonna cast our vote here. The poll has started. Parents opened up several credit cards in my name while I was away at college. They racked up more than 15K in debt and want to kick OP out now. Because they brought it up. So. I, I guess we can cast a vote for uh, how big how big of an asshole are the parents here. She's she's NTA. I think we can we can assume OP's NTA here, but how big how big of an asshole are parents for racking up 15k in credit card debt in their child's name? What? Goodness. Yeah. Uh, if you're voting in TA, I, I know you're voting about OP. If you're voting about, um, if you're voting about anything other than TA, we're talking about the parents. Yeah. I think this, I think, I think we've got the polar opposites here. We've got NTA on one end. We've got ASCON one with the parents. How could it be anything else? It's got to be ASCON one for the parents. Got to be. And there it is. Uh, 63% with NTA for OP and 35% saying, yeah, hell yeah. I think we're all pretty much in agreement there. We'll see what happens, though. Originally posted May 9th, 2024. I guess this is a lesson in paying attention to my finances. After having just finished my freshman year of college, I came back to my parents' house for the summer. My mom made it a habit on Monday and Tuesday to make sure she got to the mail before I had a chance. Even running from the kitchen Tuesday to make sure I didn't get it as I was expecting an Amazon order. Freshman in college? What kid turns 18 and they're like, sweet new lines of credit. Today, the mail came kind of early and there was a letter from a collection agency addressed to me. I only knew it was a collection agency once I opened it and discovered I supposedly owed nearly five. I only knew it was a collection agency after I opened it and discovered I supposedly owed nearly $5,000 on a Capital One card. I have no idea I was ever signed up for. Once I got done freaking out, I called my dad at work and asked him what to do. It was weird when he said to talk to my mother about it. He didn't seem happy at all, but I didn't think much of it. Once my mom got home, I asked her about it, and she said she and my dad opened up a few credit cards in my name for household expenses. She said she thinks I owe around $10,000 to three different credit card companies. I checked my credit, and it turns out I owe over $15,000. What mom says it like it's no big deal. She's like, yes, we opened up a few cards in your name for household expenses. And then and then said that that OP owes the money. I'm like, oh, I think you owe 15K. I think you owe 10, but it's actually 15 for household expenses that have been incurred while you haven't been here. We ended up having a huge argument about it when with my mom saying her parents did this to her when she was 18. She said that I could file for bankruptcy and that it wouldn't hurt me because I wouldn't be trying to buy a house for several years. Something. I'm interested in going into a government-related job and a bankruptcy would probably disqualify me for it. She knows this but doesn't seem like she cares. My dad got home a couple of hours ago and they talked to me together. Either I can declare bankruptcy once they, once they spend up to the credit limit of the last card with any credit on it, or they said I could move out at the end of the month. Uh, <laughs> what? I just feel like it's incredibly unfair because it doesn't sound like bankruptcy will actually do anything for my credit and possibly sink my job opportunities. 
How can I get my credit score back to where it was, which was around 720? And how can I get this to not affect my credit going forward? Relevant comments here. Comment, that's identity theft. It's a felony. The ball is in your court. You could easily have them arrested and you could lien their property. Comment, not sure if this is another comment, but I'll write this out. One, fuck these pieces of shit. You owe them nothing now. This is an egregious betrayal of you as a person. They are trading your financial future for some new shit in their house. Fuck them. Two, you're a tenant and they can't just kick you out. They have to evict you. If they change the locks, throw your stuff away or anything like that, call the police for an illegal eviction. Three, absolutely record the next conversation you have on this subject. Use the voice recorder on your phone, but record the conversation. Four, go to the police and file a police report with your evidence. It will be able, it will able, it will be able to be removed from your credit and hopefully land them with some jail time and a big fine, hopefully. Five, fuck these people. I have three kids and I can't imagine ever stealing from them. Update June 4th. I'm sorry. Update June 10th, 2024, one month later. Also, I have something like in my eye. It's freaking me out. If you see my eye like freaking out this whole time, it's probably a hair. And you, you hate touching your eye. I don't like touching my eyeballs. It freaks me out. Freaks me out. This is bullshit. And the first thing that I thought of was it's identity theft. Now, I don't know about OP being a, a, a tenant because unless they're, there's like a formal rent agreement, I don't think that tenant rights probably apply to them, but we'll see. He's got squatters rights. Squatters rights, but he's been away at college. Update June 10th, 2024, one month later. I ended up taking the advice of the Matt... I ended up taking the advice of the vast majority of people here and filed a police report. The officer took some printouts of everything as evidence. Once I had the report, I called all of the places listed on my report and gave them the report number. The three credit card companies all took it and were pretty cool with it. The collection agency wanted me to make a goodwill payment so they could start investigating my claim that it was fraudulent. Of course they did. They said they could still sue me even with the police report, even if I didn't cooperate, if I didn't cooperate with their fraud report. I refused, obviously, as I don't want them to be able to take money out of my bank account. I'm also pretty sure the collection agency has nothing to do with like those charges being proved fraudulent. They just get paid whenever they collect. So. You did the right thing there. I never told my parents that I went to the police, and for a couple of weeks, they had no idea. Right after Memorial Day, they received a call from a detective, and everything blew up. After the call, they began screaming at me, and my dad started literally throwing my things out of the door. I called the police at that time, and they showed up and told my parents if they wanted me to leave, they would have to evict me. I came home from work the next day, and the locks were changed. I called the police again. My parents refused to open the door and said all my stuff was at my grandparents' house. I received another report number for the unlawful eviction, which I was told was a civil issue, and got my stuff from my grand from my grandparents. Luckily, I have a friend with a couple of spare bedrooms and she said I'm welcome I'm welcome to stay with her for a couple of months. I'm scheduled to move into my own place in about a week. Once I get full tally of the total cost of everything including moving, I'll be filing a civil lawsuit against my parents for unlawful eviction. I was told by the same detective my parents didn't seem very truthful with anything, and the state's attorney's office will be in contact in the next few weeks regarding identity theft charges. He said he believes that they will likely prosecute probably as soon as this week. If that's the case, they, or more likely just my mom, will be issued a warrant and have to spend at least a night in jail. No matter what, I feel as though I made the right choice. Additional information from original OP after reading comments. Original OP, I'll post another update if my mom ends up getting arrested and or if my civil suit has any action on it. I appreciate everyone's advice in the OP. Commenter, for what it's worth, you probably spoke to a collections agent who lied to you about them needing a good faith payment to start investigating. One, no good faith payment is needed to investigate a situation like this, especially with a police report. Two, the moment you pay them, they legal legally classify you as accepting the responsibility for the full amount of your debt. Three, credit card companies and their debt collectors cannot sue you. They will just put it on your credit report and harass you. Oh, and... And let's get some feedback from the one and only, the gorgeous and incomparable Candy Thunder. Hello, love. That was so sweet. You got a rogue, oh. be rogue beard here. Think you got one? What? You got? He he might have another update. Oh. I, uh, we were checking to see oh. if, since it had been a few days since we found the story. We were checking to see if. There was another update. So he said, hold on. But we can go ahead and give feedback on this part of it. And oh, I don't think there is a single person in chat who would ever do this to 
another human being, let alone their own fucking child. Like, how could you are setting your child up for failure to do this to them? And not only like this mom had the opportunity to break the cycle of what her parents have done to her. And she chose to just do it because that's that's the easy road to do this to your child. This, and what did you buy? Like, what did for fifteen thousand dollars in household expenses? And they're only eighteen, so they must have like it, in one year. Like, what? What? In the, what? It's I, like they just did it to to buy shit. I yeah. don't even understand. Either buying shit, or they or they got themselves in a pickle and um, and yeah had like had their AC break or something, and they're like, oh, we'll we'll open up a card in her name to cover it and survive. And once but you then, do it once, I feel like they took that as an opportunity. Like they got away with it once. So yeah. Why not do it again? Then and it then becomes again. like like their line of credit. Yeah. You're, oh, I'm sorry. I pushed the keyboard in. How are you still moving away it's from everything? It's the microphone. Everything? It's in my bubble. Well, the microphone needs to be in your bubble. I understand. Okay, I'll put it way back here. Is that better? It's can it can it be up there? Not feel like it's in your face. That's fine. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm, try, I'm trying. I'm um, trying. And agreed with what they said about the the um the debt collection, the good faith payment. That was such a line of crap. And knowing knowing what had happened to this person, the collection agency is like yeah you we still need a payment from you even though we understand yeah. like fuck you it's, i'm pretty sure they get a commission whenever they get you to pay anything so of course know. they're like yeah i'm not really giving know. a shit about anything but you making a payment of some kind also can you imagine being someone who's 18 like fresh <laughs> like at college you come back and your entire life has exploded like and you probably never going to have a relationship with your parents again you have nowhere to live and you now have debt that you didn't even rack up. And your parents, the ones who promise to love and protect you for the rest of your life, are actually the ones who did this to you. Like, that is a, that is a fucked up situation. It is entirely fucked in. up. Also, if I didn't challenge Candy Thunder's bubble, y'all would never see her. <laughs> You'd hear her, but she'd be way back there. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's I, I have a thing with my space being invaded and so the microphone makes me feel like I'm, my, my bubble well, is being invaded. put like my face on it <laughs> if i put my face I on the windscreen here does that where that there are times when i don't want you in my bubble i need that's just who i am as a person <laughs> um yeah he's dusty's always basically in my bubble so is Navy. So is Ava. Yeah. So is so, there's, so are the animals. So are the like dogs. everybody. I always have someone in my bubble. So there's. I'm just. I'm very protective of my bubble whenever, especially when I'm at the office. <laughs> Winton. <laughs> right there, you go. That's awesome, yeah. Amber. I love Space that. Invader. Yeah. Space Invader. Uh. Yeah. This. The whole. The whole. My mother or my parents did it to me. I'm like. Hey, okay. You? Right now, Opie's madre. I'm guessing that uh, that oh, your parents did a lot of shit to you that you loathe them for. So why would you try to create that same torture for your own child? Why right. would you repeat the cycle there? Yeah. Why was it ever an option? Like what? What? <sighs> like I feel yeah. like our job as parents are try to are are to try to help our our children get ahead in the world as easy as possible. This was making it so much harder for them and yeah. putting them like several steps behind and giving them massive challenges to deal with for the rest of their life. I mean, what that's that's doing the opposite of what a parent is supposed to do. It's really what, sad. It's like I, I can't imagine doing anything that would hurt my child. Like on on this level, I can't even imagine the thought process behind like the entitlement behind. Well, you can just file for bankruptcy. Like it's just free money. That's not free money. Like. And you know that. You know that that's not how the world works. And you're just setting your child up for, I don't even know if you, can you, I mean, can you file bankruptcy as an 18-year-old? Like, I don't even I mean, know if I, that's a yeah. thing. Yeah, if you can have debt, you probably yeah, can. Yes, but wow. So it, it, it gives a little bit of like the um, the betrothal contracts, you know what I mean? Betrothal contracts where, mm. where essentially children were, were betrothed to another child in another family, but there was some kind of deal struck there too. It's like they traded their child's future for some goats or wheat for three summers or something. You know what I mean? It's like they- <laughs> We're watching Bridgerton right now. Or Queen they, Charlotte, in case you can't tell. <laughs> they, they cashed in their child's future. Yeah. 
They did the same thing. Yeah. It's just not shit that you can do anymore. You can't oh, do that. Elizabeth, I'm I'm so so fucking sorry. Ooh. Literally just I missed it. She said that her dad that did this to her. What? Huh? I I do think that it took a lot of strength to file a police report against your parents. Because yeah. that's like something that feels unnatural, that feels wrong to do that to your parents. And so I think that would take a lot of a lot of strength from someone, especially at that age, to do that. And I'm incredibly sorry that that happened to you. It's terrible. Yeah. That's terrible. And and I would imagine that, yeah, even if you are, even if you do get it removed from your credit report, you're going to get it removed from a version of a credit report. This is going to be something that follows you around for at least a decade. And if you are trying mm-hmm. to purchase a home, the title company is going to be like, hey, mm-hmm. we're going to need to see all yeah. of the evidence that clears you from this. Uh, this is going to haunt you for a long, yeah. long time. Like your parents' fuckery is going to haunt you for a long, long time. This is a no contact this is a lock everything down. Do not give them access to anything. File civil. Like I would pursue civil charges. I would pursue criminal. Tra- I would pursue every kind of charge you possibly fucking can well, because they deserve it. And this is, I feel like this, if this had happened to me, I would, that would create trust issues. Like the people that you're supposed to be able to trust with your safety and who are supposed to love you unconditionally. Just. Acting selfishly. Just did this to your, and like that has got to create issues with trust to be able to accept other, I, I don't. Ugh. Was oh, that like an update, it. Tony? No, no, he said it was okay. another story. This sounded similar. Damn, we'll keep our eyes and ears peeled. I mean, there's another story that's worse. <laughs> we found oh, a worse story though, cool. <laughs> Maybe uh, we'll, we'll do it on the, oh yes, before we forget to, um, there is a YouTube members live happening tomorrow night. So if you are also part of the YouTube. Thunder crew. Thunder Crew, yes. Then there will be a live tomorrow night, and that live is going to have Dustin and myself. That's right. I get a special guest for a YouTube members-only live, um, Candy Thunder. And we didn't get a date night this month, so this is our date night. Just kidding. But we'll do that in the back as like a podcast setup. So tomorrow night. Read stories in the back. Oh, my God. Um, Just to clarify. <laughs> tomorrow night, 9 p.m., it is members only, not only fans. Stop. <laughs> Shut it down. Shut it down. This is a workplace, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Candy Thunder. Heck yes. All right. And we need to get set up for VIP because it is 521 now. Holy cow. Uh, thank you guys so much for, for being a part of this today. <laughs> sorry. I'm sorry. I'm a teenage boy. Angela Lewis, Jenny, uh, Jolinda Carange, Minions Den, Moon, Sierra Dawn, Chase 14, me too. Stay at home, mom. Uh, we've got Karen Sansbury, Jessica Shadow, Maria Brill, Chelsea Lee Ann, Carrie Lee Arna, Don Evans Hoskins, TLS, Jessica Shadow, Oma Loves Disney. Thank you guys so much. Hippie Mama, Jessica Shadow again there. Jenny Lee, Vero and Dan, um, IDY, Luck, 1971. Tony Spark, Vero and Dan again there. Donna DJ, get jazzing on it. Karen, thank you guys so much. Greatly appreciate it. Uh, greatly. Jessica Shadow, I get it. I also work with my husband. Yep. Sorry, Tater. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not sorry. I'm not sorry. All right, VIPs, we'll see you here shortly. Give us about 10 minutes to get set up for the VIP back there, and we'll see you here soon. Otherwise, we'll see you Thursday night, 9 p.m. Central Time, if you're a member of the Thunder Crew on the YouTube exclusive. Um, otherwise, Sunday, 9 p.m. Central, we have the multi stream. And of course, we'll be back here next week, 3 p.m. Central, for the TikTok stream. So June 23rd is the next multi-stream at 9 p.m. Um, that will be TikTok and YouTube. The next normal TikTok stream will be on Wednesday, June 26th. Make sure you join us there. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel and check it out. You can find the latest Dusty Thunder podcast episodes with Ellen and Sergeant Mac. Hell yeah. Uh, we've got Thunder and Spark there. We've got Piano Man. We've got more exclusive content there. VIP live coming up in about 10 to 15. We will spin the Wheel of Thunder and give away some stuff. We'll see you there. Thanks, guys.